Good afternoon, everybody. It's 3 o'clock. I'd like to call to order the meeting for the St. Augustine Port Waterway and Beach District. It's January 21st, 2020. Let's all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America to, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Secretary, please call the roll. Commissioner Benjamin. Present. Commissioner Rivers. Present. Commissioner Way. Here. Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Flowers. Here. Okay. Approval of the agenda. Any changes or anything on the agenda from the last two months? I'm sorry. For let's see, option approval. For, yeah, this one here. Well, this one's already been approved. Okay. Um. I so we can start with public comments. Anybody from the public? Good afternoon. Thank you for your service. Ed Slavin, Box 3084, cleanup city of St. Augustine.blogspot.com. Um, our rights are at, under attack in this country, in our county, and I just wanted to tell you about something I saw out at the county commission this morning. County commissioners voted unanimously to hire one Hunter Conrad as the county administrator permanently. They didn't advertise the job. They didn't post the job. They violated the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And earlier, Max Royal, the St. Augustine Beach City manager, came in and asked me what happened, and I told him. And I said, Max, you wouldn't even do that. Max would advertise. You would advertise if you're hiring somebody. You advertise to can have these people um, here to talk about um, being your contractor as an engineer. But the county, for the highest paying job in the county, other than the medical examiner, the malfeasant medical examiner in the O'Connell case, um, Fred Rackbulick, I think it's paid slightly more than the county administrator, but this is the second highest paying job, the highest ranking job in the county. And they just voted to do it without advertising, without posting. I just wanted you all to know that. Hell, you wouldn't even do that. I um, wanted to talk to you about records retention and about the need to preserve and protect every single document that the district currently has. Prior to the meeting, Ms. Kemper had a conversation with Mr. Piggott, and she was wanting to have a records retention policy. Well, you've already got those records. You know, you may have had a right in the past to throw stuff away, but it's not wise. And here's why. This is our nation's oldest city. This is not Daytona. This is not Miami. This is St. Augustine. And you all have a proud 30, history going back to 1937, this commission. And I've been to that office with Commissioner Flowers. We looked at records. I made records requests back in July and August and September. Those, everything in there, I don't care how old it is. Please preserve it. Digitize it. Don't throw it away. And, and please don't let Mr. Piggott tell Ms. Kemper what to do, or, or you all. Now, um, Mr. Chairman, um, I want to talk to you about your residents again. Uh, I have still not received any substantive response from you and I'm assuming there's not going to be one to the 120 paragraphs I had when I wrote the election supervisor, but just wanted to give you an opportunity again. I don't think you live on that boat, and I don't think anybody else does either. So I'd like to suggest that you step down as chairman, and I'd like to suggest at the very least that um, you allow the commissioners to elect somebody else as chairman um, who is not a Jacksonville resident. Needs to be the chairman of the St. Augustine Port Waterway and Beach District. Needs to be a resident of the St. Augustine Port Waterway and Beach District. Um, but I guess I'm going to have to raise that issue with uh, the Florida Division of Elections and some other agencies. But I just wanted to afford you an opportunity. I've been more than patient, more than gracious. Um, I want to talk to you about the seven generation test. Again, I'm really proud of this agenda, first of all. I, I, I looked at it uh, earlier, and you're talking about some really important stuff. I mean, you're, you're getting to the, the, some of the problems that some of y'all ran about and some of the things that everybody here wants to hear about. So I'm just going to yield the balance of my time and thank you for um, the agenda and um, um, keep on keeping on. I mean, this is an important district. Oh, I know what I wanted to say, uh, and it's not on the agenda. Um, at their meeting last week in this room, y'all were disrespected by a young man who works for um, the city of St. Augustine Beach, who shall remain nameless. Um, and uh, basically, he recommended that they not televise your meetings. So you may want to consider moving your meetings over to the other city. And I know Mr. Pickett could probably give you an answer right here, right now. He is the Director of General Services. Um, St. Augustine City um, has a lovely broadcast facility. They could broadcast your meetings live. 
I don't think they're going to have the uh, uh, quibbles or cavils that the city of San Augustine Beach uh, staff had. And it also happens to be the same building where your records are located. So it would make more sense to have your meetings over there rather than here where I'm telling you what. Those, those commissioners, well, the commissioners understood. But if, if you watch the tape, watch this guy. I was going to call him a kid, but that would be ageist. Watch this young man. Um, go on and on and on and on. He's like Eeyore, a nattering nabob of ne negativism, and basically he, he didn't want to be bothered to um, televise your meetings. And, and he came up with several things about conflict, like you heard here before the con in December, the conflicts with the police schedule and everything else. Um, so fine, if they're not going to do it, just, just move your meeting. And then I'd strongly suggest maybe that you pick a different meeting time um, rather than 3 p.m. Because I know uh, some people want to get their days started in the morning. Um, some people want to go to meetings at night. You know, working people are more likely to come to meetings at night. But I've just never really understood the theory behind the 3 p.m. meeting time. And um, with that, I'll yield the balance of my time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anybody oh, else? I have a question. Can I ask him a question? Sure. Ed, what are you talking about, the records, Mr. Piggott, telling at least what you do? What are you talking about? There was a conversation I overheard between Mr. Piggott and Ms. Kemper prior to the meeting, and she was saying she wanted to have a records retention policy. He was comparing it to Indiana Jones's, uh, um, uh, I, think, I think he made a remark. Anyway, I think they think you have too many records. I don't think you can have too many records. And, and, and for historical purposes, I think at the very least, if, if you're going to digitize them, please, and, but, but don't destroy anything because it's po potential evidence and you know, potential criminal prosecutions or lawsuits or whatever else, and it's the history of the district. Why would you get rid of it? And I know the Historical Society Research Library on a routine basis will accept records from uh, government agencies like the city of St. Augustine. So that was my point. Just, just okay. don't let them destroy anything. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? No? Okay. Um, I'm going to change a little bit on the agenda because Jim's got a, a meeting to go to. Jim Piggott from the, the city. Um, Sandy, he, he, Jim, you want to address Jim with regard to the city contract for salt one run dredging and the, the use of, improper use of port funds by the city? Salt <coughs> run dredging. Yep. I had some more. Well, my question was about the some of the checks that we I requested from the city of St. Augustine all the projects for the last 10 years, and they still had them, even though they only had to retain them legally for three years, um, from the port, because that doesn't exist in our port office. I can't find, I have no clue, to tell you the truth, other than bits here and there where the money's gone. Um, so Mr. Fleming, I think Tim Fleming sent me a, um, or gave me a list of those. My question was, Mr. Piggott, he said four of these projects are not completed. Do you know what those are? I have no idea what you're talking about. I know we're doing three dredging projects rolled up in one big project right now in Salt Run. He sent me a list. These are all, this is nothing current. This is all past. Nothing current going on right now. And I've got a list of projects on a little stick. Then I've got a list of invoices. They don't match up. So I asked again, where's all the records? And he said, well, four of those projects are not complete. So do you have any idea what he's talking about? Which four of these projects? Probably three of those are dredging projects. These are all in the past, and none of these are current. It has nothing to do with the current salt, one, salt run dredging. Well, there was three grants that we applied for for salt run dredging. Three years ago, two years ago, and last year. And we're combining that $200,000 to a $600,000 bundle to dredge salt run. Who do you get to dredge salt run? Our contract is with Brant's Diversified. I'm oh, sorry, who? Brant's Diversified. Brant's? Brant's. B. B R A N T. C E. Brant's. Say B R A N. B R A N C E. C E. Brant's. Okay. Diversified. Diversified. And that person does assault one dress, um, dredging all the time? They, when they win the bid, they won the bid this past time. My question to the board is, why are we not, we are the regulatory agency, why don't we control that money and do the dredging? Why do we give it to another government agency to do that? They're not a dredging agency any more than we are. So why do we turn over all this cash and then it sits in the city coffers? And my other question is we this. Don't, we don't get the cash until after the project is completed. 
So oh, it really? doesn't sit in the city bank account. Okay, well, again, I've got Mr. Fleming telling you have our cash for four projects. We Has nothing to do with Salt Run. Okay, we'll clarify. You're misinterpreting what he said because he knows we never take okay. the money until after I'm, the project's done. Okay, on that list, I had a $90,000 check for a kayak ramp, a $10,000 check for a kayak ramp. The last check I remember us all talking about was $138,000. And that was for the kayak ramp, and you would come back to the port to have that used for something else, right? The one, the one thirty-eight. The ninety thousand dollars. We never got the ninety thousand dollars from you for the kayak launch. That was wrapped together with the police boat after Matthew, so we can re, uh, rebuild our fuel dock for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. And that was one of the interlocal agreements. We that can't you rebuild your fuel dock, though. It's a public dock. It, you just tried to tell me before you were running a private marina. But anyways, which I know it, it is. is. I know it's, it's a, a public marina for sure. There's no doubt about enterprise that. Enterprise fund. All right. Okay. Which is not paid by tax. Uh, it's, it's still not, a public marina, right? It's still a public All marina. All the staff's public. They get pub. The city pays for everything. From the marina, the pensions. from the funds that the marina take that the marina makes who pays for the retirement pensions the uniforms the marina budget who, who pays for right it marina. is all still paid yes by the city of st augustine that is a 100 percent part of the marina. city of st augustine but it's an enterprise but it fund doesn't like matter if it's a public marina we can't use our funds according to the attorney general to rebuild any marina's fuel docks mr bedslow could you please research that for me sure and let us know next time because it looks like we might be spending some to see if it's absolutely proper for us to spend. I need you to find the, um, what's the word I'm using? Not the excuse, the reason that he, the city can come in here and take the tax dollars meant for all these other projects and use it to repair fuel docks or well, fuel. Know, it's, uh, it's the port of St. Augustine. So. I need, would you please, I don't want you to answer me now because it'd be a quick off the cuff question, answer. Please research for me carefully and perhaps we should send another letter to the AGO because the last one where we, she addressed us directly, I gave you guys a copy of this when we were trying to um, do the boat parade. So the $90,000 you said you didn't get? Because I've got an interlocal agreement for that ten thousand you didn't get. An interlocal agreement, but we didn't do that part of the the uh, kayak launch, correct? Right. The kayak ramp doesn't exist, so. The ten thousand for the drawing and stuff, which was completed, and that was ten thousand from you and ten thousand from Find. For the what? For the phase one of the kayak launch. All right, but there's there's but you've already said there's not going to be a kayak launch, is there? That was just postponed, correct? Um. So the money was given that was supposed to be used for a kayak launch. The ten thousand dollars. No, 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 one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. No. Was sent to the repair of the city marina. Now that's what Mr. Fleming is. Was ninety thousand dollars earmarked for phase two of the kayak launch. There was sixty thousand dollars earmarked for a police boat. We were going to go fifty-fifty with a with find. After Matthew hit, we came back here. We canceled those. This is what the port wanted us to do. Okay, we canceled, we those canceled interlocal both those agreements grants. have been canceled. Finish, we finished both those grants and we said we would like to rebuild our, our uh, fuel dock after Matthew so we can get more boats up and down the waterway. We can't do that. So we'll go into the legalities next time. But you know, well, you know what? You don't serve on this commission. How much research have you done with the Attorney General to see what we can spend our money on? Have you ever read the charter? The have you ever read the charter? Oh, by the way. This is what your interlocal agreement says. The $150,000 repair to City Marina was for conducive to environmental awareness. It's just not what we're supposed to spend our money on. Just one second. So, Mr. Um, Bedsole, you're going to research that for me carefully, right? Sure. Okay. Let us know next time if we can give any more marinas, whether they be public or private, this public money that's meant for other things. I would like to read one thing. I can't find it and I'm too sick. We can only spend our money on what we are literally specified to spend it on and nothing else. That's all I have this time. So is a quick derelict boat update. Uh, we did pull two boats within the last two weeks, one last week and one yesterday that were on our list of boats. As the weather again is getting better, we're able, not us, but our contractor is able to go out and get the boats pulled. 
Where were they at? South of 312. Okay. Is there anything else, Sandy? Was that uh, well? I just wanted to say, um, if there are interlocal agreements that have been canceled, then they should be showing as canceled. Because right now I've got something fresh from your assistant, Mr. Fleming, showing them as valid contracts. Can you imagine how I'm going to go through records trying to figure out? We have no records, Jim. How there could was, the public there... ever come to that office over there and figure out what we did with our money? That's all. There was documents that showed it was canceled. Not sure. It's if not it was been given to me. It was sent to me as all the interlocal agreements, valid interlocal agreements, is what I figured that they were. And once again, I've been given a, basically a load of crap. I can't figure it out because it's not valid. Anybody have any other Ninety thousand dollars, but oh, that just went away. Where did it go? There's no paper trail. Just you. What happens? Something happens to you. We won't know where the money went. Right, so is this a, what about this uh, city of St. Augustine city contract for salt run dredge? Is that, are you satisfied with that? They I have? answered my question. Now, this branch diversified. Right. Like I said, there's, there's no reason for this port commission. I know we have no employees. By the way, we're the only special district in the state of Florida that does not have a secretary. We have no business giving our money to the city and allowing them to check, make, do all the oversight because we're not using dredgers that even have modern equipment. They don't have any video. They don't have any of the computer equipment, anything online that does all the accurate modern dredging techniques. We're using old stuff from old families in this city that's been here forever and wasting our money. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Okay, government. Let's see. Government representative comments. Hello. Hello. Hey. Aaron Braddock, standing in for Josh Underwood, uh, for St. John's County Marine Unit. He, uh, he provided me with some statistics that he wanted me to present to you. So we had 161 hours on the water. 48 uh, calls for service, uh, 16 vessel inspections, 18 uh, wake zone patrols, four uh, other agency assists, um, ended up with uh, eight marine enforcement warnings uh, safety related, uh, two citations uh, for registration and safety gear, and uh, they had 13 uh, marine sanitation inspections. Um, also, he wanted me to say that majority of the inlet buoys are all off station currently um the uh one of them i believe just washed up on shore oh, last Lord. week would you say that again the uh inlet buoys majority of them yes can you give me specifics i don't have the specifics i know i think it was six i'll shoot him an email i think six washed up um on shore last week and uh, when we went out probably uh, two weeks ago um I, all of them were in they had the not right already they had not fixed the two that were already no, in trouble he, so josh uh got with coast guard um a little while back and they're aware of it uh but a date or time that they're gonna be able to come fix them is our inlet is virtually there. unmarked right now what do we still have i guess would be easier to say what we still have up what we do uh that i don't know um i, I have to get with josh on that um, but when we went out before, it, they were almost all of them were off station. Some not far enough to where it would be a hazard, um, but they are definitely off from what the charts show. Y'all have any other questions of me? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If, could I comment to the commission about what he was talking about sure. right now? Yeah, um, You know, it seems everybody and their mama has called the Coast Guard to see if they would do better for us. And I mean, going back 10 years easily that I know of, Harbor Master, I don't know about Mr. Pickett, but I know the Harbor Master's called. I know um, the Sheriff's called a couple times, and the answer is always the same thing. It's very obvious that it's going to take a lot of political juju to get the Coast Guard to put some decent um, markers out there. You guys know they're just on these big concrete anchors, right? Mm -hmm. So it takes nothing to take them away. And look what it does to us. It's really horrible. The last thing, once somebody goes aground out there, so my question is, how do we get some political juju to, to give them a call? 
because we're not going to be able to do it. Mr. Rivers, you're the GOP committee man for the county, are you not? State committee man has nothing to do with this board. No, no, no. I'm saying it's going to take a little bit more than this board. It may even take state legislation, somebody to call in from the state. But what would you suggest to protect our inlet? I would think someone who's a committee man for the GOP and we have a Republican governor might be able to help us out. Well, I, I mean, I can kind of speak to that. The, the feds aren't going to spend money and resources on that until you can prove to them that it's worth their while to spend money and resources on that. And we're a tiny town. You know, we, we got a lot of boats coming through, but, yeah. you know, we, we actually, we had law enforcement come and talk about a grounding a vessel ran aground last month, right? That's one of what? We get about, probably about six a year, you said? Six, six to ten, maybe? If that? Yeah, so six to ten vessels a year, you're going to have a real hard time convincing the Coast Guard that that's going to be worth, you know, the $20 million it's going to cost to, to upgrade. I, I agree that it's worth... $20 million? I mean, seriously? Yeah, I, I, would, I would guess so, yeah. I mean, the, the buoys themselves, I mean, those individual concrete buoys are hundreds of thousands of dollars a piece, are they not? Yeah, so to... Wait, 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 to concrete to, buoys? I'm, I'm talking about just... Look, no, no. you go up to Georgia and just have a pole in the ground. And they pound it in, right, Mr. Wade? You have to pile drive uh, I, them. I don't know about how they install I can't channel markers. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. More government people. Sydney Lemblad, um, St. John's County Beach Services Supervisor. I just want to update you on two projects um, out on the beach. The first one, the Fort Matanzas ramp um, construction just went to the board on consent item. Today it was approved, um, so they'll move forward with the um, selected company to work through the contract. Hopefully construction will start in February and be completed um, before sea turtle season in, in May. That's the beach access ramp there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, is, and then, sorry, is there oh. enough beach to put a beach access ramp? We got an email a week or two ago from a guy in Summerhouse who said that there's like you know, about six feet of dunes left before those condos fall in. And that ramp's right there. What, what's... Yeah, so at high tide, um, there's very minimal beach. Um, we have an active uh, beach management program um, where we just monitor that area. Right now, you can mm -hmm. drive from Crescent Beach south to right up to that, that area with a turnaround. Mm -hmm. um, when it is flooded, we, we do close down that access. So it's just monitoring it daily Okay. For that. Um, and then the second one is the peer um, rehabilitation project that's going on. Hopefully it'll be completed before May. Um, and that project includes removal and replacement of the deck boards, the guardrails and posts, and the support beams. So right now the, the pier is technically closed, the gift shop's still open. Um, and we still have beach access on the south end. Are, are, you, are, are they going to use um, composite decking on the, the pier, or are they going to re redo it with just pressure treated? Just yeah. pressure treated. Mm -hmm. Are you with the city of St. Augustine Beach? No, I'm St. John's County. St. John's Services. County, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, within Parks and Rec. Okay. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thanks. Oh, great. More Steve, government people? Steve, while you're standing up, could you pull those blinds down there, both those windows? Oh, please. The, on the door, yeah. It's keep getting flashed. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> Steve Zukowski, Fish and Wildlife Commission, Lieutenant slash Patrol Supervisor for Coastal Flagler in St. John's Counties. Um, I can, I, <clears throat> let me give everyone a synopsis on how the aid to navigation stuff works around here. I know this because I'm a retired Coast Guard Reservist. I actually worked in the aid to navigation field for three years down at um, Station Ponce in New Smyrna Beach, but I'm familiar with the aid to navigation team up at Jack's Beach. The way we're set up here is Sector Jacksonville, which is over by the Dames Point Bridge on the other side, which is also in charge of Station Mayport and Small Boat Station, <clears throat> covers an area from roughly um, Brunswick, Georgia, just down to marker 83 Alpha down there um, by um, Rattlesnake Island. All right, that's the responsible for the aid to navigation, uh, all the aids there. The inland aids that you see, the day boards or even the, the, the beacons that are in the intercoastal waterway are 
um, essentially maintained by either small boat, the aid to navigation team, which is a small boat team in Jack's Beach off of uh, Beach Boulevard and I think 3rd Avenue. And then also, the, I'm trying to remember the name of the 50 foot boat out of um, Elvert Station, Mayport on the St. Johns River. The aids that are in the inlet, which are larger, the heavier buoys, they require a lot heavier chain. A dormer, which is like this pyramid-shaped anchoring system that chain goes in. That you have to have the large boat for that and uh, the large ship for that. And I forget um, how many feet long that is. I should know the name, but I didn't work on one of those. The issue we have here in St. Johns County is by <clears throat> NOAA standards, we are not a navigable inlet. We've been that way forever and ever, amen. So we are not a priority compared to Jacksonville, compared to Fernandina with the subs, compared to what's up there, um, also up there, uh, Brunswick, where that boat toppled over on its that ship on its side, and they're just cleaning that up. Unfortunately, we're not a priority because we're not real, and we're not we're not designated. It's a na not navigable inlet, and we're not a commercial port. Um, for anyone who's lived here for any length of time, you may know there's been. Um, casual conversations in the past about, well, if we get a jetty out there and we extend the jetty on the south end where uh, Anastasia State Park is, maybe we can, you know, make become a, a navigable inlet and get better access. But that's, you know, you're talking about a decades-long prog uh, project, probably billions of dollars now. Uh, and we don't really have the commercial business here. Maybe if we had a, I don't know, gambling ship or a cruise ship or something like that, and everyone decided to do something like that, it would happen. But because of the way we're set up, because of particularly not so much the South Shoal off of Anastasia um, State Park, but that North Shoal out there, um, we just get constant shoaling, particularly this time of year with these nor'easters. You know, they start probably at the end of the hurricane season, and hurricanes can have an effect on them too. And then it'll, they'll probably go until late winter, early spring, when it, until the Sea state gets a little more consistent and mild. So what we get in addition to people running aground on that North Shoal because they haven't navigated our area, they've got, I mean, they don't have, they have substandard navigation on their vessel, such as a road map, not even an old nav chart, let alone electronic navigation, or even on their phone. Um, you get a lot of people, particularly coming in during rough weather or at night or when it rains, are trying to cut corners. Instead of going out to the sea buoy, squaring themselves and getting their bearings right, they try to come in and we get those groundings. And last time, again, we just, we have very good public safety response in this county compared to some others. But so between fire rescue assets, law enforcement, and um, even good Samaritans, we're able to get people off of the boat before the boat either turns over or swamps, things like that. But between those North Shoals and just the fact that I think our inlet is sort of like the Bermuda Triangle of inlets with when it comes to nav aids, where they're just moving around and sometimes they disappear. Next thing you know, they end up on Anastasia State Park, almost always to the south, not to the north. They'll end up further on down, something like that. It, we just don't have a good situation here. We're always playing catch up. It's you know it's the same thing where we're always we're, seems like we're always dredging something every three to five years, and it lasts until our next big hurricane, and then we have to start the process all over again. So that's what's going on with to you know to speak to your point, Commissioner Flowers, about the political clout that it takes. We just don't have it because of the standing and designation of our inlet and, and our current situation. But that's probably what, what it would take to get something like that done, a really big favor. Well, or if, or if people want to say, you know what, we're going to get a jetty on the north side, we're going to get a jetty on the south side and make the investment to do that. I mean, I, you know, I've worked here as an officer in 95, 96, 2001, 2003, and I've been back here as a supervisor since... Man, am I old? Uh, twelve years now, almost twelve years. So, we're it's it's the it's the treadmill. You know, like I said, we were we repair or refurbish something, and then a couple of years later, four or five, if we're lucky, five years later, we have to go through the process all over again. 
and this is just one of these inlets where you should not be com you should not be coming in at night at all without local knowledge. Sometimes I'll be out in patrol at night, and officers will hear people on a VA on the radio, Marine Radio VHF, and at least they'll call the St. Augustine Marina and ask for some guidance. And sometimes, if we're out there, we'll go lead people in, and we're not tied up with something. Sergeant Whitehead from the PD has done it. I know uh, Sheriff's Office boat when Sergeant Underwood was a corporal did a couple times. So we'll try to help out. Sometimes we have good good Samaritans just go out there and help out. But we have people making bad decisions and coming in here at night and trying to cut corners, and we get these type of boating accidents. So the Coast Guard is intimately <coughs> aware of our situation down here, particularly when I was a reservist and drilling up there for my last eight years from 2008 to 2016 before I re retired. But there's only so much you can do unless there's some sort of larger commitment that's going to be made to St. Augustine as a... Sounds like it might be cheaper just to have you talking about a, literally a harbor pilot. That's something you could do. Um, you could do that. There's training and, li and insurance and liability goes into that, but that's probably a, um, a, more, a, a more immediate... Uh, not solution, but it would help the situation more. Do people normally pay those folks and other where they have harbor pilots and other? Yeah, there's places? a union, there's an association. In fact, so one, they get paid. One of my friends. It, it, you just, if you want a template, just look at what they're doing up on Jackson on, on Mayport. Um, they they have a they have a harbor pilots up there. I think they have two or three boats. Oh really? Okay. They do. If you might want to look, if you might want to look into that. And a, a former FWC captain, good buddy of mine down in Port Ever, uh, board, uh, is doing that now in Port Everglades. He's Port, retired. He's doing that. Mayport and Port Everglades? Well, I wouldn't check into them. I would go, I would, if you're looking into some sort of template of the pilots and what it takes with their training, things like that, you can contact the people up there in the St. John's River in Mayport. Uh, it's probably pilots oh, association sure. up there. And get, you can get, so you can get some background on it. I can't speak to that intimately because I don't have... Well, no. Is that harbor pilot at Mayport a Coast Guard function itself? No, that's it's a private. union. Okay, that's it's private. private. Okay, so they get the people using it are paying that private company. Do yes. They? Wow, that's great. Okay, yes. probably less than twenty million dollars. I don't. I don't know. I <laughs> you know I haven't looked into it. I know I won't be doing that when I retire from this job. So I've got other things lined up. There's just a. Question. I'm a member of CETO, but I'm not familiar whether they offer that type of service, if you're a member. Well, th uh, thanks for uh, mentioning that, Commissioner Way. CETO has also been very, um, CETO has been part of this sort of public safety network we have here. They've gone out there a couple of times, CETO or towboat, and have assisted people without pay, just as part of this you know, Good Samaritan on the water type thing. But if you were a member, so, but would you call them? And <coughs> I think you can. I think you can do that. But I don't know if they're going to go out there and lead you in and, and guide you in because that's not part of their normal. Mm -hmm. That's part not part of their standard um, agreement with members. So I don't think that happens. Otherwise, we'd see that we'd, we'd be see, they'd be doing that left and right all the time. And um, so. I, I can't, again, that's probably something, CETO or towboat, you want to speak to them um, yeah, I might call them. firsthand about that and find out what, if any, parameters there are about, like, guiding people in or assisting people in, in like a pilot function. Any more questions on that? You called it a non-navigable inlet? It's not a, yeah, it's, it's according to the NOAA charts, it's not a navigable inlet. Not a navigable inlet, but yes. then boats do navigate it anyway I mean yes and and for and we're you know and and we probably receive based upon Coast Guard practices when it comes aid to navigation we, we probably receive a little more attention than other places that are non navigable inlets with with um, aids to navigation in them that are Coast Guard maintained so that's just me actually that an official designation Yes, on the chart, yeah. Okay. I haven't, that well, used to be on written charts. I haven't looked on an electronic chart to see if it's been. Is Ponce considered navigable? Yes. It is, yeah. and they have real markers there. Well, they've also got a north jetty that extends out pretty far. Right, and because of that. And they're, sh they're shoaling issues in Ponce, because I used to work down there, have a lot more to do. 
Our inlet snakes more, dog legs, so to speak, because a lot of shoaling and the tides and currents. Ponce, the issue for shoaling there is, is on the south side by that county park at the point, I'm trying to remember the name of that, where the Coast Guard station is, because, <clears throat> and also some of that shoaling carries into the intercoastal waterway where it affects um, if whenever you're going to break north or south in the intercoastal waterway. Sometimes you have to go a little further inland before you can make a, a turn safely but um, to be out of shallow water. But on Ponce, the inlet is, is typically if you come in and you stay near the, the, um, the jetty on the north side, it's a straight shot as opposed to you're going to have to maneuver around, things like that. At least that's the way it was. And you know, I was down there last year. I actually went out a couple times with some of the boats, some of the officers down there. But so, they uh, have um, real nice markers down there that don't move around. Well, you have a couple things. You have an aid to get. You have an aid. You have a small aid to navigation team down there, like you do Jack's Beach. But then again, they don't take care of the ones in the inlet, just the ICW. The ones in the inlet down there are maintained by the large boat up here off of Adam Mayport. So same sort of thing. Okay. An effort to uh, to get the jetties extended. Where I mean, I, I realize that's a major that's thing. A but did I have to go through the Army Corps of Engineers? They would be involved, yes. But that's they're just one cog. Well, in where a, does one begin to do something like that? Where does one begin? Yeah. I say an effort. Above, to get this, okay, no. above this level, above the level of this committee. Um, the Pregon County Commissioners, and then you're going to be talking to state people and DEP, and then it goes from there, probably up into the federal level. You're going to want to talk to state, co probably the Coast Guard also, um, local public safety, law enforcement about, you know, as part of the package of what, what would be the benefits of it. But that's a major haul. I mean, that, that is a major, major haul, which is, I presume, why it hasn't been done here. For you know, for as long as um, well, I haven't lived here probably consecutive as long as y'all. But I, like I said, I've been here since the '90s, in, in one way, shape, or form. You say about ten years for a process like that's that. That's what I'm. Th by the time, yeah, the pro, the, the whole. By the time you get it started to completion, yeah, and I, I think that's being conservative too. I mean, uh, you know, on the you know, conservative side of it. But again, I'm. You know, that's above my pay grade in terms of. All the administrative, the logistics, and the operations of all that. Um, so, I the information I have on that is just cat from casual conversation, from talking with um, you know Coast Guard personnel when I was an active reservist, uh, occasionally. So I I can't really give you any guidance or an extremely educated opinion on that. It's basically I, I believe there was a study done about. 10, 12 years ago that Taylor Engineering did, that that was one of the recommendations in it, if I remember correctly. <clears throat> I'll go back and research that and come back next next month because if that's something we should start, you know, um, if that's the only solution you see to the inlet or the best solution you see, maybe that's something that we ought to target toward. I, I don't think there's, I think there's little doubt that it's the best solution. But you have to, you know, to use that cliche as a juice worth a squeeze in terms of um, the cost, the, the, the construction, which is going to go on for years and is going to affect people coming in and out. I mean, you all see what it's like here when we just have um, a dredge out there. Are you talking about a there. jetty or, the, or just the markers? Putting jetties in. Oh, you're talking about jetty, okay. I mean, you see what it's like when we just dred we're just dredging out the ICW. And what a liability or ha nav hazard that can be for boaters when those things are out there for you know sometimes only three to six months and pipe roll. I mean, it's a it's a major undertaking. But from someone who's in um, you know a boating safety world, um, I'd like it. It would make things make it make our life easier in turn, and also it would make life easier for um, people coming and going in the inlet. But again, I, I, I don't know if you, you've got to, I don't know if you've got to be designated a commercial port. Or, or, I'm not sure about that. There are a lot of administrative things <coughs> I'm not <clears throat> up on. About how the, far would it have to be extended? 
Mm, I don't. That that that's where you're gonna have to talk to your engi your coastal engineers, and and your people like that. I, uh, I would think that it's it, but pretty. To answer your question, pretty far. <laughs> I would think it would either qualify or not qualify real early in the process. I think what he was yeah. getting at is without showing a need to have a designated navigable inlet, whether we would qualify. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't think it would be 10 years and then it would say no. We would probably find out no. Pretty fast. Pretty, quick. pretty fast, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then, then I would, you know, like I said, I, I don't recall, since I've been back here, <clears throat> March 2012, so that's what now, eight years. I, and I've been coming to these meetings now as much as I can. I don't recall, you know, this... Um, committee seriously looking into that since I've been back what 12 years now so I don't know about your your history and if it's been looked at before I don't know if anyone here knows it or can speak to that just talked about it but never did anything with it we also right. talked about cruise ships coming in there was a gambling boat here at one time um, things like that but I That's never it. seriously talked about it it's another thing you have to consider when you're talking jetties is what does it open up to or open us up to and I know nobody wants cruise ships here Mm -hmm. But anyway, can I ask you one question because you said you were in Coast Guard too? Yes. I got an email regarding the um, police boat and I guess a sheriff boat because we wouldn't buy any of y'all's boats at all, would we? Fish and Wildlife? Yeah. Okay. No, no. Right. Yeah, no. But I got an email from a constituent who says that um, our police boat, which we bought, and a, um, the sheriff's boat doesn't have the right color lights on it. Now, he's saying, and he sent me the, I don't have it right in front of me, but sent me the uh, cola regs, that government boats are supposed to have yellow and white alternating lights. Now, who, who sent this to you? I'll have to, um, actually, I'll get it up. All right, law enforcement, specifically law enforcement only, is blue light. Okay? So, for example, uh, fish and wildlife boats will be nothing but blue lights. Sheriff's offices, PDs, so uh, municipalities and um, also uh, uh, county they can go with either all blue or they can go blue and red. Okay. All right. Public safety is going to be red, such as your fire vessel. And then um, your amber lights are like the uh, sea tow, tow boat, um, boats that are commercial boats that are doing some sort of, engaged in some sort of operation out there. So that's, that's the <coughs> quick and easy breakdown of it. So an amber is probably like a yellow then. Yeah, that's yes. towing. Amber. Yes. Towing. 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 Yeah. So that's the way it breaks down. So an alternating yellow and white light or amber and white light, you, do you have an, any idea what that is? I mean, that could, be, that could be a barge sputted off out there and someone's just got white lights in addition to the amber lights blanking, but it should be just amber. There should be small on the four corners of it. Okay. But, but that's, like if that, Cop Jerry's boat is uh, blue, that's correct? Yes. Okay. Blue or law enforcement, all blue or blue and red combination, although it's strange, but I've, FHP, what they're doing with their summer cruisers, they've got all sorts of stuff on there now, depending on whether they're engaged in a law enforcement function or just like a uh, function uh, helping someone with a flat tire. But I don't, don't want to get into the weeds. Blue is law enforcement, blue and red is law enforcement, okay. red's usually fire rescue. And then amber is some sort of commercial okay. operation. Commercial, okay. All right. That's the... Does your district still have the biggest district in Florida with the least number of employees? You, are you talking about Fish and Wildlife? Yeah. Well, we're, we're in regions. Your so region, we, we I have, mean? We have uh, six regions around the state. Northwest, North Central, Southwest, South A, which is... Um, um, South A is like Palm Beach area, South B is the Keys in Miami, and then we have the Northeast region above that, which is what we're in. So, now when you say... Fewest number of employees, I thought years ago you had told me we're the biggest region with the fewest number of officers working it, and I was just wondering if that was still correct. No, I don't think I've ever said that. Um, I may have said at some times, you know, when there's a manpower shortage because we're waiting for people to come out of the academy. And by the way, the one vacancy we have down in Flagler on the crew from October, I just found out we'll be getting a recruit out of the academy in April, so that's good news. Um, but no, I don't think I ever said that. Um, I, we're not the Northeast region in terms of vacancies or positions. We, we're not the smallest region. That would probably be 
maybe north central or northwest in terms of officers assigned. And your northwest is typically Tallahassee out to the Alabama uh, Florida line. So, any more questions on um, the ongoing saga of our inlet? No, oh, thanks. Okay, and you know, it's just it's been that way. Um, okay, uh, uh, boating on waterways. Not a whole lot has happened. The boat that ran aground uh, on the North Shoal with three juveniles on it and a man and woman prior to the last uh, meeting last month. I think I told you Officer Bill Miller was working that because it's a boating accident. Unintentional grounding is a boating accident. It is. So during the course of the investigation that the gentleman was secured, uh, he, he was taken to some hotel. Officer Miller met with him, let him know, hey, I'm working this. It's a boating accident. We have to do it. So he started looking, and he gave the guys information. Don't leave town without talking to me. Well, the guy let, there was another there was a companion vessel with him, and he hopped on his buddy's companion vessel with his family and left town the next day. Couldn't find him. He just bolted out of here. So, and his boat, within three days, ended up on Anastasia State Park on the beach, which seems to happen quite a bit. Um, the vessels hardly ever go north. They seem to always come south. So Anastasia State Park wanted to remove it because it was breaking up and becoming an environmental slash navigation hazard pieces. You don't want them floating back out there in the ocean. So they removed it, uh, and then at that time it was designated as a derelict vessel or slash trash. So Officer Megan Thomas on my squad, she's my derelict vessel. She's my, she's our squad's derelict vessel expert. And she's a very good investigator because she'll be one someday, I'll tell you that. She found the guy. I forget where she told me, but she tracked him down through his mother up north somewhere. And she basically said, you better come back here or you're facing, you know, a couple of first degree misdemeanors and, and then Navarro violations for the accent, things like that. So she talked to him and he got a hold of the park managers and he settled up with them for the cost of the removal and disposal. So that's that the first time that ever happened. <laughs> It's rare. Yeah. It's rare. But um, Officer Thomas, she's been in here, I think, once or twice with me. I try to bring officers in so you all can see them and let them speak sometimes. She is very good. And she's got, um, she's, she's got some very good investigative techniques that the other officers either don't have or haven't acquired yet. So, I, uh, so whatever she did, she, she got it done right. So... That's a happy ending because typically that doesn't happen, so it doesn't all fall on the taxpayers, all that. Um, <clears throat> so that boat's been, um, that situation squared away. And I think it was just, just gave the gentleman some verbal warning because he had no nav aids on there whatsoever and basically said, look, next time do this, don't do that type of thing, and we'll see if you ever, you know, go out to the sea buoy and get squared away, squared up. Um, secondly, I think I told you there's a sailboat down in our unofficial anchorage south of 312 there. Um, and so Mr. Mr. Glenn Strads used to be his boat, but he was found. Um, he'd passed away on his boat. Oh he, he was found. Glenn, you, that used to sit him? just south of the marina in that uh, Endeavor, I think. I forget. He's got a sailboat and another boat down there off of uh, Crane he's, Park Boat Ramp. He's been out there a long time. Yes, he's he off? has. Yeah, I used to see him over at um, the Barnes & Noble once in a while. He always would being in there on his computer, taking right. care of email, stuff like that. Well, he passed away. Um, no foul play. Uh, Sheriff's Office looked into that. But his boat now is there. And uh, instead of just having, you know, going through the process of the, with the city and the port paying for the removal, um, Officer Thomas is found his relatives up in, or a relative, I think his sister up in Canada. That's where he's from. So we're working to see um, if someone will take responsibility for it. They don't have to, of course. There's nothing legally says they do. But we're, we're trying to see if somebody will. Because there are some possessions on that thing, too. And, you know, we're not going to go through there and, and look at them unless there's some um, compelling. I know a very good friend of his, his best buddy in town, if he's still over there. Okay. Uh, you know where Linda, the Irish sailor, is yes, over I know there, Linda, yes. uh, right next to her. God, I'm trying to get 
And I was just there last week. She, he lived right that. next to him for years and years and moved over, and, and but they're best buddies. When he would probably okay. well, be able to I'll, assist. Maybe I'll drive over there and speak to Linda. Yeah, Linda would know knows. how okay. to would send right. you, to, yeah. Because that boat's sitting there now, folks, and probably within another two or three months, it's going to be a, another artificial reef if it, we don't get it out of there. So what did it do? It's down in land of Bohemia. South of 312, right? It's just sitting at yeah, anchor? Yeah, I call the unofficial boat ramp. It's still floating. It's still there. Okay. Yeah. So we but, just need to bring it. If I were to, if, if I go out with a couple friends of his, can I even do that? Well, that's what I said. We have to, to do it lawfully for reasons of accountability, responsibility, liability, all the abilities. Um, you really need to have someone who, uh, who, he either granted permission, like a power of attorney to, which he didn't do but we try to look for a relative somebody like that not a close friend um but even a relative it's you know, it's gonna be iffy but especially since uh, you know they're not that not local may not know the situation but it's it's about to become an environmental or um navigation hazard so on the law enforcement side our rationale would be if there is a good friend you're going to help with the disposal or removal of it but again um, there's, there's going to be some legal issues to a degree because there are, as far as I know, do you know if they took anything off the boat in terms of his possessions or anything like that? Yeah. It's currently. It's really the boat's not worth anything, is yeah. it? It's been in the water. So right? that's why we're trying to get a family member to come down here, look, take care of it, go through it, and we're still working with that because we don't want, and we're trying to expedite it because we don't want it to sink. So I'm hesitant to, I would not recommend, friend, unless it was breaking up and it was a um, environmental navigation hazard and there's an expediency factor there to prevent something, I would not recommend a friend doing anything with it or, or, or friends of the unofficial anchorage doing anything with it. So we're going to have to make a decision pretty quick, and I'll, I'll talk to Officer um, Thomas about that soon. So it was the niece, not the, the niece. sister? Okay, yeah, so thank you. There's a brother and a sister to him. Right. Um, and then the niece, the brother and sister are estranged from Glenn, uh, but the niece remembers him and is trying to get everything turned over to her. Uh, the last time I talked to her, that was last yeah, time. Appreciate the update. So that's what Officer Thomas is working on then. I thought it was a sister, but the sister is a sister, so it's the niece. Okay. So uh, hopefully we'll have some good news to report next month on that. Because that will, um, there's probably some petroleum product on it too, so we're going to have a pollutant discharge if it sinks, and who knows what else. So um, we'll see. We'll see what happens on that. I, I, but um, thanks for the update on it. Appreciate it's currently it. Currently five Jesse's, so it's yeah. keeping it from getting too far away. Or ending up in a marsh or something. Yeah. Okay, good. Any more questions on that? Okay. Uh, like short one today, um, and good thing because I'm talking about the the inlet for a while. Uh, fisheries, not a whole lot to report. Um, officers Miller and Harris were actually out with um, Sergeant Underwood from the sheriff's office doing uh, federal fisheries patrol, uh, and we appreciate when our local partners from the county or the city want to come out and do some fishery stuff because that's rare uh, in this state. Most of your uh, your county and city people just do boating safety so we appreciate it when they come out and do stuff the weather was good over the weekend they went out uh they were out about 12 nautical miles they checked the boat that had uh, several nice kobe on it but also had an undersized amberjack so the gentleman at least was honest owned up to it he said yeah i didn't even bother to measure it didn't think you guys would be out here today so but uh so just uh he didn't have any priors so we just wrote him a warning that we Officer Miller <laughs> wrote him a warning and um, just let him know you're in the system now. Next time it's going to be a citation now, or it could be a federal um, civil infraction and you don't want one of those because while ours may be $250, those are like 500 or 600 <clears throat> So that was over the weekend. Like I said, the guys got out. They were able to do some um, right whale patrol. It's the time of year the right whales are coming out here for calving and with the calves and all that stuff. And... I think they even saw this. Uh, they said they saw a great white shark out there. I don't. They're here this time of year. Could be. 
could be. I mean, I, I know this time of year when I've gone out there, I've seen some pods of leatherbacks out here. Those are big turtles. Mm -hmm. So could be. Um, also, this time of year with the Super Bowl and the football playoffs coming, and the, the people are having oyster roasts all the time, meaning recreation. So there are recreational and commercial harvesters of oysters. And Salt Run's an easy place because, one, you don't need a boat or you can get, you just go out there in a real shallow skiff and you get to a certain area and get out and start walking and digging oysters. There's two problems, though. The oyster area, it's not open all the time. It's conditionally <clears throat> restricted. But when it is open, it's small. It's basically, uh, you know, south of the boat ramp there to the park boundary. And what happens with some people is they get a little rambunctious and actually go down to the park and start picking oysters and then we get a call from one of the park rangers or somebody so we got a call on monday and uh, again officer miller and i think sergeant underwood helped him on that too came by and they i think they checked two commercial oystermen but where they spotted them they they knew what they were doing because they were right on the line they're right on the line and or just north of it so um, when they were able to talk get to them they checked them out their oysters were good their permits were all up to date boating safety equipment was good so we didn't have any violations but again this is the time of year where everyone wants to have the oyster roast with the football playoffs and the um every weekend when there's something going on so it kind of it picks up until now until about middle of uh, february and that's all i have any questions comments concerns yes when F fwc does sanitation inspections just like the county and the city does marine, right marine sanitation devices yes. yes and a lot of times we'll be with the county when we do them again sergeant underwood um and uh, his crew they're they're more right well i mean the reason i'm they're, they're more active with it than a lot of uh, most sheriff's marine units right the reason i ask is i've spoken with sergeant underwood a couple times we, we've talked on this board uh, a few times about ordering zip ties to be used as locks mm -hmm. uh, that could be applied you know during an inspection and kept on until somebody you know skips town or whatever but would would stay on uh to keep people from you know opening right back up again as soon as y'all leave um i've spoken with uh, sergeant underwood a bit about what they would like out of a zip tie but i wanted to get your input too uh i mean he had mentioned that you know something about 14 inches long would probably be ideal but he demurred on there being any other particular features beyond uh, our initials, you know, St. Isaac Port, Port Waterway and Beach Commission initials. But I wanted to ask if, if you, you know, if anything leapt to mind in terms of useful features, because I'd like to go ahead and move forward with this, if at all possible, and get, get some zip ties in y'all's hands. The, the federal regs call about securing your marine sanitation device, the, particularly the ones that have the, um, the discharge straight overboard. And as a former Coast Guard boarding officer who dealt with marine sanitation device regs too much. <laughs> the, the Coast Guard's point of view, it basically is, if you lock the door to the head from the outside, it's secure. It's secure. You don't have to put zip ties on it. But, and, and so you're, you're saying issues so many to the boaters in the area. Well, I, that's another question I actually had, and one that Josh was not really able to answer for me, is that would this be something we were just distributing to law enforcement so that they are, you know, during inspections, they are putting them on, or are you issuing the boat? Because I, my, my sense is that if you're issuing them to boaters, any boater that has more than one is going to be able to zip one on as soon as they see your boat coming, and then clip it as soon as you leave, and then zip another right. on as soon as the next time they see a yeah, boat, so right. it'd be useless. The, the, yes, the, yes. Um, the best way to combat unlawful human waste in overboard, the discharging it is, is regular inspections. And then also you have to have some teeth when, if we do, because there's civil penalties right now, but they can escalate, um, for the first ones. And then going to uh, people have to go in front of a judge and explain things typically st state attorney's office is, is they've got so much going on with mainstream violations and crimes that it's it's unless we can show a deleterious of health effect 
I mean, directly. They're not, it's not going to be high on their priority list. So to answer your question, the problem with the zip ties is, uh, um, one, it's not, the only, it's not the only way to comply with the federal regulation. Mm -hmm. All right. And two, um, it's easy to get around. Yes. So um, the, the, the best thing is regular, r regular inspections. So if we come, we meaning the law enforcement community here, when we're doing a regular inspection on marine sanitation device and we come across one that uh, is not a compliance for whatever reason, um, uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's broken or just it's, it's not maintained properly, we need to note that, put it on the warning or citation, and follow up probably within, you know, we give the people so many days to rectify it, and we go back. Mm -hmm. But part of the problem is people, a lot of the people in the community here, they're not on their boat all the time. When we go back, they're not there. And we're not going it, to, it's not the type of civil violation, because, again, at first level, it's a civil violation, where we're going to board a boat and check it with nobody there. That's it's just no. It's it's uh, it's a Fourth Amendment issue, and unless we have a compelling reason, like the discharge is happening now and something like that, so it's happening in our presence, and it's and, and may, we need to go on there and shut it off, get on there. So that that's part of the problem. It needs to be, and I will say this again, Sergeant Underwood and his crew, they are they've been a great help for uh, with us with that. In particular, so I think I think I I had lunch with um, my officers late last week, and I think Sergeant was there. We're talking about doing maybe a a detail where instead of just one or two days, something that's going to be like over several months, going back and checking. We'd like to tell people, uh, here's our card. We're going to come back in a week, but. Uh, a lot of the people on the boats, they're of um, meager means. Um, they may not, if they have a cell, a cell phone, that's great, but they do everything on their cell phone. They don't have an e uh, they don't have a laptop or an iPad or something like that. Their cell phone's not always working. They give us a number that's out of, you know, out of service. So it's hard sometimes to come back, make an appointment to, to get on the boat and ch recheck it. So we're going to put our heads together and see if we can come up with something else, some other program. So I would, my recommendation would be not to invest in a zip tie program at this point. I'd like to talk some about that if it's okay. Um, I lived on a boat a long time, and I know how this can be enforced and how it cannot. Um, it's, it was my understanding that it was uh, Officer Underwood that was going to be doing, because he does most of this. You guys don't right. do as many. I mean, you do spot we, we, checks. We do. We don't do it as regularly as he does because of all these other things. Plus, my, my crew's got to, even though we're a coastal crew, my crew has to do hunting enforcement, ducks up at Guan and other things right. too. So we're greatly appreciative of his efforts. Oh, yes. And he has been, I think, pretty darn fabulous uh, that he's had the time to do what he's done. But the way he was talking and that I understood it was he was going to have these things. Right. You can't let one get out, you know? No, no. And this is the way you can do it. And I can tell you how Marathon does it. And they got a lot of boats and they had a lot of boat problems before. But he goes on there. For example, you've got the marinas up to, right now the marinas up to Sebastian are some of the worst offenders. So you approach a marina. He will not be on the Sebastian River before those people on that boat know he's coming. Mm -hmm. I have never, I think we've always had about 48 hours notice, <laughs> to tell you the truth. And anyways, and one of those was supposed to be a real surprise swing. How that gets out, I don't know. So you're not going to surprise too much. So you've got tons and tons of liverboards at these marinas. He does, does, does the inspections, and it has to be at just the right hour when everybody's home, mm -hmm. you know? Like when a popo comes to the house to get you, they wait until they know you're home. Mm -hmm. So you go in there. He puts the thing on. Right. Now, this is what they're going to do. They, <laughs> they're going to want to use that and dump that thing. They don't want to get the boat up. Either it can't move or they don't want to move it or whatever to get it all the way over to the pump out. I'm trying to think how many pump outs. There's not, some of those don't even have pump outs. Mm -hmm. Do you know if English Landing, the new English Landing, has a pump out at all? 
No, I just saw some new fencing or picnic tables there. I drove by the other day, so I, I, I do not know. But I didn't see a pump out. But anyways, now, so he's going to come back and that's going to be broken because they macerated their sewage mm -hmm. and put it in our river um, to give us MRSA. And, um, but then Officer Underwood will say, oh, so in other words, you must have gone at least three miles offshore to dump your sewage, because that would be the closest place mm -hmm. they could dump their sewage unless they went to a pump out. If you went to a pump out, you didn't need to break it. Mm -hmm. Plus, you can get proof of that pump out. I used to keep my captain's log, all yeah, proofs right. of my pump out. A captain's log is a legal document, am I right, sir? Yes. Okay. Somebody can make, unless you push the point, nobody's going to do it. Mm -hmm. So when they say, oh, Officer Underwood, you know, I either went and I did a pump out. You didn't need to break it for that. No, no, I went out for a nice sail. Well, then your name should be at the bridge. Right. You're not getting out of this port. Well, is that true? They do keep the boat's names at the bridge tender. I mean, the um, bridge person. If they have to raise the bridge? Yeah, I mean, if you ask them to raise it. Uh, they, I, I don't know for sure, but I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain they would keep a record yeah. of it because when we've had to follow up with some, um, some barges and tugs that have basically smashed the fender system, the bridge tenders were able to give us information on that, on those. So I know makes, they that do that, sense. though, because they'll turn right around and lie and say, mm -hmm. no, I was out last weekend. I'm like, well, then your name will be on the list. Right. And when it's not, that's that nice $500 ticket. But a little real hardcore enforcement could change the whole course of the Sebastian River up there. Right. And, you know, your comments notwithstanding, Officer Underwood is pretty convinced that this is not a panacea. You know, it's not going to fix the problem. But at the very least, it's, you know, going to raise the floor a little bit. So uh, with that in mind, I, you know, I've done enough, enough research to, to say that you know, we can get about 1,000 of these things printed up for about 150 bucks, which is, you know, in his mind, at least a three or four year supply. So I'd, I'd like to, if we could, move forward with that, although I'm, a little, I'm not entirely sure what the procedure is going to be to move forward with that. Do we need to put that to a vote? Well, I just think that what he, he's been pounding home is this whole thing is going to depend on enforcement. Mm -hmm. And if whoever puts the tags on there can't also do the enforcement and fine them or do whatever, I mean, you're spinning your wheels. Well, that's what Josh could um, do. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Well, I mean, if Josh is just completely in control of it, but I will speak to him right now. He's um, he's not I'm not available today. Um, if he has a plan, an idea. Mm -hmm. that's, again, I don't know if you all remember. I've been out of work on workers' comp now. It was a year in December. I just had my physical therapy today, and boy, that stuff is fun. But I should be back in November, uh, November please, uh, March, back, and I'll, you know, for Blessing the Fleet and other things. So when I'm back in, in, in a system on a regular basis, if he's spearheading this and he's got a plan, you know, I'm going to support him on it. And if he wants to go through with this, with the tags or whatever, that's fine. I'm going to, unless he's done it already, unless you all know. He, he's, he's definitely putting a plan together. Okay. Has he contacted um, Coast Guard up in Jack's? I don't know. Yeah, we need to get them involved. Uh, playing a political game to try to get a little bit more of the heat that you spoke of with our prosecutors and so forth. Yeah. Um, to try to, if we do have a violation, that they are going to actually take it seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, um, yeah. He's, he's working that angle. That's, yeah, it, it's funny because, it, it's funny, I said peculiar really. Um, talk to people all the time and the feds will change their regulations on the fish snapper group are out there and because we're federally deputized we're the first person to get bad news and so we get a lot of slings and arrows verbal stuff because they're the first law enforcement they see you know contrary to some uh, public I don't know, opinion just because I'm a government employee doesn't mean I'm big on more and more regulations we have enough regulations it's about regular enforcement from you know, from my perspective of it, and doing that, and then that's how you gain compliance. And once you gain compliance, people in the community will police themselves. Hopefully, not always. There's going to be rogue people out there, whether it's commercial fisheries or, or MSD issues. But um, I'll talk to Sergeant Underwood about it. I, I would ask him that we also bring some of the Coast Guard people from Sector Jacksonville in on this too. Um, because it, it, uh, because they have also, uh, it's just good to get the, um, a little bit different perspective from that level. And again, when you become a Coast Guard boarding officer, they go over 
<laughs> we, you know, <clears throat> up there for two weeks, and we almost spent two full days going over MSD stuff and had a, all the ins and outs of it. Um, uh, wasn't one of my favorite things to do, but it's the if you're a boarding officer, you know your stuff, and and it would be good to coordinate with with the Coast Guard also on on this. So uh, I think it's if he's got a plan. Um, I'll support it, and we'll, if he's going to take the lead on it, we'll work with him on it, and we'll work, we'll follow him. So maybe we'll table this until uh, our next meeting when we've had a chance to uh, to talk to Josh again, and also I maybe I, I'll probably talk to him next week. Okay. Uh, and I'll he told me he wasn't coming today, uh, so um, I'll talk to him next week, and we'll we'll get it squared away, and maybe iron iron out, iron out some things, and let you know. Uh, other than the dates and the times and when we're going to do it or where we're going to do it, but um, we'll, we'll get a progress report on it for you. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Nobody else from the government? Okay. Secretary Treasurer's report. City Police. Um, overtime, we committed 8,000. We've spent 500 to date. The Sheriff's Department overtime of the 20,000, we've um, spent $4,130 to date. Derelict boats, we've spent 8,300. Um, we did. The Regatta of Lights has not sent an invoice yet for the 7,000, so that still remains unpaid. In the State Board of Administration Fund A, we have twenty-two thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars in the in the operating account. We have two hundred and ninety thousand one hundred and thirty-two. In the money market account, we have two million one oh six nine sixty. I took one hundred and seventy-five thousand from the operating account and put it in the money market account so we would get some interest. So because of till the money is going to be used, it might as well earn its interest. So again, in the Summer Haven account, there's $700. Um, and of the taxes, we budgeted $570,634 for the um, tax revenue, and we've received 315603 to date. And we have a balance of expected of $255,031. All right. Thank you. Any questions with regard to finance? Nope. Okay. All right. Approval of the minutes, November 19th and December 16th. No additions, no corrections. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes as they are. Seconded. Aye. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Okay. I wasn't here in December, so I can't approve yeah. that. And that's for both dates. Okay. Engineering report. Nothing to report this month. All right. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do the presentations. We're going to start with DMC. Right. Yep. <coughs> These are presentations for engineering firms. We have DMC and Taylor Engineering. First is DMC. Well, thank you. Good afternoon, Commission. My name is Shailesh Patel. I am with Dredging and Marine Consultants and uh, appreciate the opportunity that you have provided for us to submit our proposal uh, for engineering services. Um, we are obviously a firm given the name Dredging and Marine. This is what we specialize in, uh, the things that you have uh, put out on your RFQ, RFQ uh, solicitation, other kinds of services that we provide. And we provide a lot of municipalities, a lot of ports, a lot of small communities with similar services. One thing that I want to bring to your attention is that we're also uh, engineers uh, on an ongoing basis for St. John's County and City of uh, St. Augustine, so we provide similar services to them. Um, <coughs> get given a list of things that you're looking for, these uh, engineers that are selected, and it is my hope today that at least you'll select uh, multiple firms. We know that we're not, you're not obligated to give us uh, a penny's worth of work uh, in any given year. Uh, 
but I also recognize that for us it's an opportunity because there might be times when you might need someone to get some work done, done quick, um, and have results uh, that you're looking for, uh, given that other consultants might be busy doing other work. So um, we, we do the things that you have asked for. Um, what you see in the circle is everything that you had asked in RFQ. The main things we have highlighted in the, in the text uh, is, is kind of giving you a, a synopsis of the services, so dune crossovers during the hurricanes, shoreline stabilization, environmental um, assessments and compliance. We do permitting. We do we provide bid documents, you know, plans, and, and we provide the inspection of such services. So uh, we can provide definitely everything that you're looking for uh, for what the commission needs. Um, we have an office here uh, at 128 Hawthorne Avenue uh, in St. Augustine, our drive, and, and we also have our corporate office in Port Orange, so we're only about 45 minutes uh, away either ways or five minutes away from your offices. So we are local, and so we can be responsive if you ever need us to come and talk about things. Um, our manager here, Joel Stewart, uh, you might or might not know him, but for 32 years, uh, he was with the St. John's River Water Management District and the technical programs manager for the Indian River Lagoon. And he's very familiar with the environmental aspects of St. Augustine and St. John's County. So we bring a lot of history and knowledge of this area. Um, through our, our contract with St. John's, if you're familiar with the Villano uh, boat ramp facility, the new rescue facility that they've got uh, with the three boat lifts, we actually designed that for them. And it was quite a challenge because we had about 47 feet of muck and our piles that we've got, the concrete piles you were talking about, kind of for your buoy markers and so forth, or navigation aids, these things went about, uh, I believe, 85 to 90 feet. Um, down, so that's the length of, of these things. Just to sustain um, the hurricane impacts, the loads of the boats, I think, uh, were pretty massive. And so we accomplished this uh, given the budget that they had. Um, we also assisted them with getting funding from the Florida Inland Navigation District for this particular project. But some of the projects we've worked with, we've done boardwalks, uh, we've used all kinds of materials, including the synthetic Drex material that uh, I think you had mentioned earlier on, what kind of materials. Um, we've done the assessment underneath the Daytona Pier, uh, that's over the, the, the beach area. Uh, we did the full assessment of all the hardware underneath, all the piles underneath, uh, before the new restaurant was put in. Very familiar with hydraulic dredging, mechanical dredging. You talked about some other technology with, which, which is inside uh, the cabins and so forth. Um, and so all those kinds of things that you're looking for, including floating systems, we do look at assessment uh, during our design for hurricane impacts because that's obviously something that needs to be looked at on every project. So again, don't want to take too much time. The question to ask is why, why would you select, select us as a company? And, and I think the first thing is obviously uh, we, we specialize in this. We don't do other types of work. We do strictly marine coastal work, uh, we work on projects that is related to waterways, okay? So we're very familiar with it, our staff, our engineers, our ecologists, everything we have to do with waterways uh, is what we do. Um, we're local, uh, we, we have a team approach to our management. One thing you will, you will realize is that uh, our managers that will serve you are consistently the same people. We will provide you the same team so that you're not dealing with different people um, within a project or year after year. Um, we do have working relationship with local firms here, and, and you know we, we don't provide, just like other firms, they don't provide all their services, such as geotechnical engineering or surveying. You might get some global national companies that'll do that, but yeah, it'll cost you an arm and a leg as well. Uh, but we do work with local, other small businesses uh, in the area that are knowledgeable about what's here and can provide us a better cost, a better uh, service to you. Um, one of the things that separates, we feel anyway, separates us from many other engineering firms that do this kind of work is the holistic approach, right? When we design anything, it's not simply you say, hey, we've got our shoreline erosion or we want to put a dock. We'll look at the whole project from every angle and ask you questions so that whatever we're designing isn't going to impact something that you might be planning for the future. So we want to make sure that when we design anything, we're looking at environmental impacts, minimizing things we can, and what are the future uh, aspects that are going to come on so that when we design it, it's not going to hinder 
the future progress of any project. So I think that separates us more, more so than most, most other uh, companies. And then reliability, that is a commitment we have made. Uh, companies have goals, vision, uh, values, and, and one of the things that we aspire is to make our company elite uh, on the east coast of Florida. Uh, we work in the Florida environment. We've been in the Florida environment ever since we've started our company. Our engineers, 25, 35, 40 years, have all worked in the state of Florida. So they have a history. They know what kind of environment we have, salt, uh, corrosion, et cetera. So materials that we put on our projects are, are thought of uh, very well so that we know what kind of impacts we're going to go through because operation and maintenance is another issue. Um, lastly, I think the ma most important is, you know, your mission obviously is to promote and, and develop St. Augustine as a major center for commerce and recreation, for marine activities. Our mission of our company is to listen to our clients' need and make sure that we have facilitated your objectives uh, and making sure that we do that in an economical way, in a socially uh, correct way, and in an environmentally responsible way. So I think there's a very good synergy between what, what our mission is and what you're trying to accomplish. And our purpose at the end of the day is to use our expertise, whether it's in managerial aspects or in technical aspects, and make sure that we help you resolve the issues that you're facing. But at the end of the day, you know, brings joy to what you want to accomplish and that you're happy about what has been done and it's been done with a benefit to the public that we serve. Uh, we realize at the end of the day, whether it's us, whether it's you, we're serving our communities and that's what we want to do. And, and we take that to heart as a small company. That is very important. And um, that is what we do for a lot of our clients. And so at the end of the day, um, I hope that you will select more than one firm. And if you do, I hope that you will sincerely consider DMC as one of your consultants. We'd love to build a relationship with you as we have done with St. John's County and hopefully we will with the city of St. Uh, Augustine. But uh, besides that, uh, you know, we will provide you the service. And so we hope uh, we, you will look at us favorably and uh, look forward to being your consultants. Can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, are you even more specialized when you say um, dredging and marine consultants? Is that even more specialized than a coastal uh, engineer? So um, specialization, that was, that's interesting, like it's saying civil engineer. So I'll say a coastal engineer, uh, and, and I know you've got folks from Taylor Engineering and so forth that work with you, but I think they also work more on the dynamics of sediment movement, of hydrology, et cetera. They have that additional service that they provide for what needs to be done. Uh, but there are people that are expertise, has expertise in specifically those kinds of issues. When, when we started this company over 17 years ago, and I've been in this industry for 25 years um, doing this kind of work, we realized there's, there's a real niche market in, in sort of structures and shoreline stabilization. And so that's what we focus on because our goal is to be the best in what we do. And we, we work with a lot, lot of large national and global companies um, that try to come in, they either want to acquire us and we say no, we're happy the way we are. Uh, but so they, they give us the work because we have the local knowledge, we understand the dynamics <coughs> of the state of Florida, the hurricanes, the impacts, the salt water, etc. And so from that perspective, you know, we have specialization in this particular arena because that's what we want to do. Uh, can we do other things? Yes, we can, but this is what we want to be the best at. And so that's why we responded to this, knowing that, hey, we have a good opportunity and we'd love to be, uh, you know, uh, part now, of your... You know what I'm talking about when I talk about dredgers that uh -huh. have the, the computer and all? What's that called? In booth, you called it or something? Well, yeah, so th that's, I mean, again, it's it's just the technology that they have that they can actually, through the screen, right. see the depth of dredging, what elevations. And so the challenge with that is is uh, a lot of the larger companies that do sort of Army Corps work, mm -hmm. um, navigation channels, big, big projects, they have those navigational um, technology in there because sometimes they have to be so precise and both right. so exact. A lot of the dredgers 
that are smaller and that are here in the state of Florida really don't have that technology. And the technology also... It's not expensive, it, actually. Well, it's not expensive, but it does add cost as well because of the training of the individuals that you have. Do and you again, know any dredgers that have this technology? If we were to do a dredge project, because it's insane, as inexpensive as it is, right. not to be using that and us basically dredging blind. We don't know what's happening. Or, so so there, are, yeah, there are large larger companies that do, you know, out of Texas and other places that have a fleet of Oh, large so not, dredges. See, that's when you're, you're talking about, what do they call it, staging? Yeah. A million dollars just to start, right? Yeah, well, so that's, exactly. Staging. So, so that's another good reason for us to have our own dredge with its own technology in our own district. If, just to win that out. And, 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 well, so I will just say this. It's, it's good to think about it, but also know that if your dredges aren't constantly working, it would. Yeah, your your equipment will start having issues. It's like a boat, right? They won't. They, they say the that's not an issue for a dredge in this area. So that I'm just is saying. the truth. So that, yeah. those are the things that you have right. to think about. Yeah. Because sure. if we had our own dredge, we could simply rent it out when we weren't using it. I don't think anybody thinks that that would go unused. That's for sure. But thank no. you. Okay. How many Any employees do y'all have in your St. Augustine so, office? So right now we have Joel Stewart. Um, so that's our newest office that we opened about two years ago. <laughs> our, our goal is to grow that. Currently we have 11 people in our company. We have offices in, in St. Augustine, Port Orange, uh, St. Lucie County. Uh, we are this, the ports engineers for St. Lucie County, so we, we do a lot of their work there. Um, and then we, we opened up uh, five years ago a small office in the city of Tavares in Lake County because we did a lot of parks for them. And, and they were like, hey, we need, we need for you to have an office there. So we have an engineer in that office as well. So, yeah. so it would be Mr. Stewart who would be showing up to monthly meetings here then? It would be Mr. Stewart. It would be myself, depending on, on what your, okay. your requirements are, um, you know, what aspects you need to do. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'm a realtor. <clears throat> yes, sir. And I recognize the Hawthorne Road is in St. Augustine South that is zoned residential. Yes, sir. How can that be your office? So Mr. Stewart it resides in that office, and so he's- That's his outside. home? Yes, sir. Okay. So that's, that's what the we utilize as a, as a home office. Yeah. But, so a lot, lot of, it's not an uncommon thing these days. A lot of uh, engineering firms have <coughs> employees all over the state of Florida. Not sure if it's zone, zoned for a home yeah. office. What's that? <clears throat> I'm just not sure. I'm not sure it's zoned. Anybody's I'm, home can be an office. Anybody's yeah, home have, can be we, an office. We do have, so we do have all the licenses that are required by the county um, for that particular purpose. So okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? No questions. All right. No. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. All right. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, Mike Trednack, Taylor Engineering. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioners. I have a short presentation for you just to, to help you understand who Taylor Engineering is and what we do. We've worked for the Port District for 29 years, but I know individually you might not be really familiar with Taylor Engineering. So let me slide, start the slideshow. I'd like you to understand that we are a 57-person company. Uh, you've seen me sitting in the chair over here the last year or two before me, Ken Craig, Steve Schropp, and, uh, and Bruce Taylor. But of those 57 people, we have 32 folks with advanced degrees, PhDs, or master's degrees. And of those, we have 24 licensed professionals, either professional engineers, professional geologists, or such. So if I don't happen to have the uh, answer to any of your questions during these meetings, I have a, a deep team that I can go to to get those answers quickly. They're, they're all very well qualified, very smart, and uh, we can address any needs that you may have. And we are headquartered in Jacksonville, but 
probably half our company lives in St. John's County, including our president and most of our senior staff. So we care about what, go what goes on in St. John's County, and we care about the projects that you are involved with. And uh, just, just to clarify, uh, Mr. Patel was correct in saying that Taylor Engineering does have the, uh, the expertise in the, the coastal processes, sediment dynamics side of things. That, that is what I do. But our water, what we call our waterfront group, they specialize in more of the, uh, the, the dredging and the structural uh, projects. Those are the folks that did the, um, the docking inspections for the city of, Saint, uh, of Jacksonville, all the inspections of the Coast Guard facilities that, that we mentioned in our um, RFQ submittal. So we do cover um, all the bases here. I, I took the opportunity with our RFQ submittal to uh, select a variety of projects that summarize the type of work that Taylor Engineering does. Uh, those highlight our technical capabilities, the a variety of local, state, and federal clients that we have, uh, just the, the variety of work that we do. Uh, I don't want to repeat all that information. I just uh, do want to focus on our local involvement. We are heavily involved with the local community. Uh, personally, I communicate with um, various St. John's County staff on a, a weekly basis. Uh, other folks work with the Florida Inland Navigation District on a variety of projects. Uh, we do coordinate with the Army Corps not only on federal projects that the county is involved with, but we also do work directly for the Corps of Engineers as, um, as a, a, a client of ours. And we, uh, we do have other um, do you have other clients with the Northeast Florida Regional Council and the city of uh, St. Augustine? So we are heavily involved. And I, I don't expect you to read all the text on the slide. Just the point is, uh, we, 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 a couple of years ago, we hired Angela Shadell as the director of our community resilience. And we, we, I believe that helps set us apart from a lot of other coastal engineering firms. And she is, uh, is heavily involved in, in the community. It lasts um, since October of 2018. She's um, done five presentations in the city of St. Augustine. Uh, there's four listed there. She did one last week that's not listed. Uh, she's down here all the time. She's completed a project for the um, Northeast Florida Regional Council and also for the uh, city of St. Augustine that, that's currently ongoing. And in addition to that, we've, we do the traditional uh, beach and inland management projects that we've done for years as well as the uh, dredge material management projects that we've done for, for FIND. So all this local involvement, we know what's going on, and we can, we can put that uh, to your benefit to, to help you keep in touch and to help answer uh, questions quickly and to help uh, just coordinate projects. And as, as a final note, we do take our, visions, our vision and values seriously. We've, we've posted this on, on our, in our office kitchen. And we, we take pride in our work. We, I care about our clients, and that has resulted in us doing great work and um, man, uh, maintaining these long-term client relationships. Uh, we've worked with Fine for 34 years, and as Carl Blow mentioned a couple months ago, he couldn't recall any problems that he's ever had with Taylor Engineering. Uh, we've done work for the Jupiter Inlet District for 18 years, the same type of work that we've done for you, and uh, for various counties throughout Florida. We have uh, many long-term uh, relationships, 15 to 25 plus years. We've worked for you for uh, 29 years, and we'd uh, welcome the opportunity to keep providing our services. So with that, I'll, I'll take any questions. Could you talk a little bit more about, uh, Mr. Patel raised the, uh, the issue of uh, hydrological expertise. Could you just talk a little bit more about that, um, sort of explain what that is and <coughs> why that matters? Yeah, I, I believe the, the question regarded the, um, the, the dredging and structure experience that, that he was talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned that we have that. Mm -hmm. Our coastal engineering group, we do more of the routine uh, or the traditional beach and inlet management, beach nourishment projects, inlet management tr projects, um, dealing with uh, channel maintenance dredging, channel deepening, uh, regional sediment man management, where to dredge material, what beaches are eroding, where to put it. But we also have numerical modelers that are have a lot of expertise with the latest and greatest uh, mic modeling system. Mm -hmm. And th I mean, those models really allow us to, to understand a, um, like an inlet system, for example, much better. So, for example, if, if you're going to build jetties at St. Augustine Inlet, mm -hmm. you will have to model what kind of impacts those jetties have to the, to the hydrodynamics of the inlet, uh, to the currents, 
and also to what, what kind of effects they might have on the adjacent beaches, both north and south of the inlet. So we apply those numerical models to gain a better understanding of that. Now, the models, you know, they're not the end-all, be-all. You have to know how to apply them, and you have to use some common sense to, to apply them to real-world situations. So we have all that expertise to not only do the numeric modeling, but we have the, the academic background to tie everything together and just help, help us understand, uh, you know, situations better. Anything else, anybody? No? Uh, well, this is, I, I don't know, this is a, a core core issue here, but would uh, would Angela come present to us at some point <laughs> about, about resiliency? I'd be really curious to hear Absolutely. what she had to say Absolutely. specifically about what, if anything, this district could be doing to uh, to promote uh, resiliency going forward. I'd be Yeah, I think that's curious. a great idea. She's a, a great speaker. So I'll, I can mention that to her, and we can set something up as soon as you want. Great. Be good. All right. That's all I've got. Anybody else? No. Okay. Thank you. The um, Thank you. last engineer that I emailed, they're from ATM. They were they apologized and said they couldn't make it and that if you had any questions to email them. Are they gonna send us a thing? Okay. Can okay. I miss you I did get the um, there was a they sent one of these. Okay, yeah. right. that's fine. Yeah. I've got it. I've, I've got it in my email. Mr. Patel, just one quick quick question. Um, projects that are a million dollars plus, they require special oversight. They have different rules. For example, everything has to be bid out. Have you done projects that are a million dollars plus? Yes, uh, okay. and, and again, it depends on who the funding agency is, right? right? But if you're familiar. Federal. See, we're a state yeah. agency, so yeah. anything we do would hold just as like we were any other state agency, even though we're a special district by name. Oh, absolutely. So when we do big projects like that, you're familiar with all of the oversight of contractors and everything and Leans on the low down and, okay, yes. just want to yes. make sure. We do full time actually for St. Lucie County, just to let you know. Um, we have been doing their dredging project at Taylor Creek uh, since 1998. Um, this is uh, the fourth time we're actually going about because the S50 structure, which brings everything from Uplands and Lake Okeechobee area, eventually comes into the St. Lucie um, Inlet area, if you will. And so we've been doing dredging projects for them, and we've had, again, the same thing helping them fund the project through FIND and other entities, including right. special you know, le legislative appropriation. But to answer your question, yeah, all those then require us to have full-time inspectors who understand, because at the end of the day, in fact, one of the biggest challenges always with, with funding is how was that money spent and how are the invoicing matching up with everything that the contract is doing. So we have to, on a monthly basis before everything is paid, has to be verified signed off by an engineer, then it goes to accounting, making sure that it's being applied to the grant that it needs to in the category that it needs to, so that it, the, the agency that's funding you, once they receive that, um, you know, th there's not gonna be an issue. Because it's always difficult when at the end, when, you know, after a year's worth of project, you say, well, we have an issue here, start backtracking what you've got. So yes, we're very familiar with that. Mr. Chairman, the, uh Agenda says presentation by these firms doesn't, doesn't say anything about us electing one today. No, I don't, I don't think we need to elect one today. We need to think okay. about it, and All it right. next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just wanted to clarify yeah. that. Okay. All right. Um, Sandy, follow up on Army Corps of Engineers and Summer Haven opportunities. No, that we were doing next time because I'm still waiting to hear back from Mr. Suggs. I thought he would have been back to me. No yeah. problem. Okay. Uh, elect secretary treasurer. No, we skipped the insurance filing. Are we? We're not doing that. Oh, we're not doing that. Okay, sorry. Yeah. What are you skipping? So. Wait a minute. Why aren't we? Why aren't you? Say that we didn't legal counsel. No, she said we're skipping B. B is what I asked you to skip. Item C. That's that's Jim is gonna. Jim was supposed to give us an update on the Summer Haven. I thought you said didn't have that. Okay. Okay. Well, that was B. Okay. All right. Jim. Okay. I continue to uh, request uh, policies from the uh, Turnbull's uh, insurance company, and we got more policies. And we got more certificates of liability insurance. Some of them indicate uh, professional liability insurance available. Um, there is an exclusion for uh, 
um, preparing, approving, or failing to prepare, approve maps, shop drawings, opinions, reports, surveys, field orders, change orders, drawings, etc. But uh, none of that uh, is involved here. The problem that I explained to you before was a lack of, of property damage insurance, which is required in <coughs> the contract. So number one, it's a breach of contract. Uh, and number two, if there is professional liability insurance, that's something that the, uh, the board could make a claim for. Uh, uh, that kind of thing, professional liability, is not in my particular area of expertise, and we would have to retain a uh, plaintiff's attorney to do that. Uh, probably wouldn't cost the board any money. Uh, contracts like that for that kind of representation are contingency fee contracts. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you want me to, uh, I could uh, find some people to come in and talk to you, or I can get an opinion. I, I, I know uh, a few of them around here, uh, and I can uh, probably give them this information that we have and get some opinions about the kind of case it is, but it would ultimately mean um, retaining somebody like that and filing a claim uh, directly against the contractor and then the contractor has to make a claim against his insurance. And, uh, insurance coverage uh, listed on the uh, certification of liability insurance is two million dollars. So there's ample money there if you're talking about policy limits. Uh, and, uh, but there are a lot of vagaries uh, concern with professional liability and the situation, you know, it all depends on the facts. Um, and it would be a uh, separate claim uh, apart from anything else you're doing. Uh, it would, uh, it could possibly involve a lawsuit. Uh, and uh, uh, everything that that entails. But, uh, I, I really don't have uh, the experience myself to evaluate something like that. So, and it's six months after we asked you to do it, you're just now telling us we need a lawyer. And, sir, from now on, as long as you're our lawyer, would you please keep in your files or for the port or whatever the proper insurance that's required by law and required by the contract in your possession, as Mr. Parker said when he was here a couple things, he doesn't get to start work. So all that insurance stuff is up front and handed over, and we never even had it in our possession. I'm so disappointed. I think, now the question is, are we going to run into time frames of having to get this filed? No. And how do you know if you're not that kind of lawyer? Well, because uh, the statute of limitations for a written agreement is five years. Well, well, we're also dealing with damage that's occurring still, so we need to, and Mr. Mike Trundak is not going to be able to help us because he keeps telling us the project's perfect. Well, let's stick with one topic at a time. Okay. okay. So who are, going to, who are you going to use? I guess you're not because you can't file this case. So I'd like to file a, uh, make a motion that we hire a lawyer. Well, I think Jim's planning on getting right, a few but we opinions still have to or make, having we some We still people have on. to have a resolution to do to do the act. Well, any as, as I believe uh, Jim just said that he could recommend some attorneys that could look over the situation and give us yeah, our options as to whether or not. I mean, this is basically it's Morgan and Morgan for this type of stuff. Call up. We're going to look at it. See if we can. It's going to be a plaintiff's attorney, yeah. Yeah, see, see if we can get the money, and if, if we can, we'll go after them. I mean, that's, that's pretty much it's it. A, it's a breach of contract, but it's really a negligence claim. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's, yeah, let's get somebody. Yeah. Jim, can you look, look at see, it? See the person that, find somebody that we need to talk to. Okay. Okay. Let's see what you think. Okay. That's, okay. All right. Okay, now we're back up to. <clears throat> Follow up on Army Corps of Engineers and Summer Haven opportunities. No, no that was the one we're skipping. Yeah. Skipping B. We did C. I think we're on the right. D now. Okay. Elect Secretary, Treasurer, Commissioner Flowers. I'm not sure what that means. But. We, have, we have no elected Secretary, Treasurer. The law requires that it has to be a commissioner or an employee. You cannot. You cannot appoint. Ma'am, you may be. They may have appointed a contractor to do it over, but our 
our charter says we have to elect. And uh, if you look at the state law for state agencies, and please do so, Mr. Beslow, you cannot give an outside contractor, a secretary, and a, what is it called? Secret, um, what we, um, secretary treasurer, because that person is liable to the taxpayers. And the only way that liability occurs is when they are either a commissioner or employee of this commission. Now, I've looked that up and I've talked to several lawyers. We cannot give that position to an outside contractor. We can have a secretary. She can be our accountant. And we need to renew that, too, because she's never had that renewed, and she's a fine accountant. I don't know how Miss Elise can be the port's full-time secretary and be a full-time accountant during the day. Mr. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion that we continue the letter of understanding signed on October the 3rd by our then-chairman, the late Jerry Dixon, which appointed R. Jones CPA and Associates they cannot be our secretary yes, treasurer. We are, okay. Because we are still under the timeline and this agreement. It was signed in 2016, and it only says that it can be terminated by either party with a 30-day written notice, and we have not We're not done trying that. to terminate it. First of all, that contract had to be reviewed every two years. It doesn't matter. It can be a continuing contract for 10 years, but every two years, our, our charter requires that we review, just like the city manager over there, you have to review the contract, and the important thing is that's the only time. Some people do it every year. We'll have a motion. Is, is, is it going to have a second? Let me hear what Jim's got to say. Can, can I just... We have to do it every two years, regardless of what you have in Hang front on, of you. Hang on, let me just hear what the, our, just our attorney says. Okay. The charter says... Commissioners shall appoint a secretary and a treasurer who may be a member of the commission. That's not the end of state law, though. A secretary and treasurer may be held by one person. Yep. And it says maybe a commissioner. It does not have to be a commissioner. It it does. Yes, sir, but state law does. Now, if you go home and check that for me, please. You cannot appoint a secretary treasurer. I've checked with several lawyers, so you please go check. And if you need me to send you the law, let me know. I'll send it to you. Could you send it Look, to all of us, please? Why at least try to look it up? I'm sorry. No, 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 I'll send it to you, too. Please do. Okay? But I'm telling you, it's illegal. It and if you need me to send it to you while our own attorney is sitting right there and not even looking it up. legal advice someplace, I'd like to see the advice that you have. I got the legal advice personally. I don't understand why you don't go find these things for our port. I'm repeating it. Yes, sir. I've got people telling me and constituents... Some of these are constituents that, what are y'all doing over there? A secretary treasurer of a government entity cannot be an outside contractor. Yeah, I will what? get that for you. That's under state agencies, it's state statute. I will get that for you. Okay. Okay, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I'll withdraw the motion, and I suggest we put this off until next month until we have more information. I think that'll be fine. Any, well, anybody, I, I any would just, other? Commissioner Flowers, if you'd bring documentation of what you're Dude, saying. I just, I figured we have a lawyer, Tom. I know, but I'm asking you. I'll be glad you're, to. You're obviously disagreeing with I'll them. send it to all of you guys. Yes. No, I feel like I'm the only one that ever follows Thank up you. on yeah, anything. Yeah, I'd like to see it. Thanks. Well, I'll send it to all you guys Thank right you. away. The charter says it may be a commissioner. It doesn't have to be a commissioner. The charter is not the only thing that controls us. Also, Statute 315, which the port laws control us as well. And others for state agencies, contracts, etc. And one of them is the selection or the election of a state, a secretary treasurer. That person is the one who says it's okay to spend that money. How can you give that authority to an outside? Commissioners say it's okay to spend the money. The secretary treasurer. Does. That's yeah, but he's the la that he or she is the last one looking, saying that's been approved. Just like that eighty-seven thousand dollars from Summer Haven that went away when Mr. Turnbull walked out on the contract. Okay. Secretary Treasurer would have said, "Oh no, we didn't. We're not happy with this." Let's let's move past this. Okay, we're going to table that until next next month. Okay. okay. I would just like to ask uh, our attorney. The the Port and Waterway, in your opinion, is not breaking the law with the setup that we have right now. Right. This is not a court. This is a commission. <laughs> right. I, I don't know what you're doing yeah. over there. 
I'm just asking our attorney if what we're doing according to our attorney is legal. Yeah, it is. And if he says it is... By I'll the way, sir, kids. Mr. Way, just so you know, I've read the entire handbook for special yeah, district. I'm, I'm, Let I'm, me, I'm, I'm making a comment. Okay, go ahead. And that handbook says the state, when they come in here, when it comes, if he misadvises you about the sunshine law, it falls on him. Nobody can mess with you. Okay, But cool. after that, we are personal, res right. we responsible. If we get bad legal advice, we're responsible. No, I'll take my chance. For how we spend these. So, no, you're not okay because you have a lawyer who's misadvised us before. I will take my chance. I'm not asking you. I'm advising you. Okay? I'm saying I can make whatever comment I want and advise this board whatever I want. Live it up. Calm down. Okay, calm down. No yelling. Okay. All right. Okay. Anyway. Okay, we're past that right now. Let's go. Okay. That's next month. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Review and renew accounting contracts. Sandy. She has an invalid accounting contract. What's the name of the contractor? The accounting firm. Again, when we this board was reelected, we were supposed to, because those accountants serve the board, and she's a fine accountant, I believe, we need to solve the conflict problem. But again, if you have an employee or a... Um, Commissioner be the secretary and treasurer that would solve that conflict problem. This but we need to renew and re renew renew our contract with this board, and that gives people you have to do a uh, public comment thing, just like when you're rehiring the city manager every year. Well, you know, I've looked at this contract, and I think have some of you guys have you guys looked at this contract yes. also. Order and, says and, and we I, have to I, renew them minute. every two uh, years. Just a minute, and I'd like to make a motion that that if we've reviewed it, uh, I make the motion that we pass it. So Does yes. that contract still have fifty dollars for per hour for uh, gathering public uh, documents? Because we can't. They they've been making a profit off of. No, we haven't. It goes right to the poor, sir. Ma'am, right right I have a con. I, no, no. I'll send you some more. Fifty dollars an hour, and the contract said twenty five went to you and twenty five went to your business. No, it went I'll pull it out for you. Anyway, there's a motion. A second. Um, there's a second. Let's have a Can I ask a question about the contract since I'm not looking at it and you are? It's right in front of you. Hey, you have a copy of it. You want mine? I, d I did not get a copy of that. Are you doing the minutes of the meeting too, Elise? Because right here it says you're doing the minutes of the meeting. No, Mr. Betzel does. Not. Okay, well right here on, again, this is why we need to look at our contracts. We have had a contract with you to do the minutes of the meeting. And are we still paying you 400 an hour, Mr. Besslow, to do our minutes that a secretary could do? You never paid me 400 You just went up hour. to 400 an hour, didn't you? Oh. No, no, What did no. we up his salary to in November? I mean, in a... 200 bucks, isn't it? November? $200. Yeah, $200. Went up 200. Are we paying you we 200 up. That's I think that's what it's been for years. I think it was a tw it was 175 or something. Uh, now, the minutes are down on a flat fee of $350. Flat right, every time, no matter how long it is. Okay. So right here we have a contract that says she's if doing you, the minutes. If you don't mind, I could make a comment about that. The minutes require uh, me and a secretary at least a half a day to do, unless it was a nice short meeting like right last time. Mr. Bessel, I've never heard of a lawyer doing minutes. That is something a secretary you does. No, that's the highest expense anybody in the world could pay to have minutes. You back through the annals of the port, you'll find minutes done by... Uh, I'm not saying it wasn't. I'm saying it's the most expensive way to do it. That's something a secretary could do. No problem. Well, the, you know, that, that price was actually taken from the uh, charge from the previous secretary. Right, but if we had our own full-time secretary, she would be doing that every month. $350 when you added up all her time. It took her 20 hours to do it. That's another great reason for us to have a full-time secretary, 20 it hours. Says minutes let's, let's of meetings, on where yep. it says minutes of meetings for us, it says the transcription will be performed by the Office of the Port's Attorney under a separate agreement. So why is it in your contract? It is. She's reading. It is. Because it's reading. I'm recording it. Because the verbatim minutes are being recorded by me, and they are the transcription is performed by the port attorney. If you read it, that's what oh. it states. Yeah. Elise, would you do something real important? When you hit the contact button on our website, it still has Jerry Dixon and Mark Helman on there, and my name's not there, and neither is his. 
Really? The contact button. Because I did. No, I already. I thought it had been repaired. I thought it did too. But, but I something, I Mr. Bedslow, without asking us, went in and changed the website. You and can't go in there. There's only one person who You can told go. me that he advised you when I said, why did you remove the directory of all of our advisors? No, I, he didn't. Wait, wait, wait. We're getting the off whole top. point of that was to say a lot was done Stand to the stop. website. We're getting off topic. You know, we had a, we had a, a motion and a vote with regard to. Who, who made the motion? Uh, I did. Okay. Review second? and renew the accounting co contract. We had a second by Tom, and uh, let's wait have a minute. Vote. Can I look at the contract? We've got fifteen uh, ninety. Sandy, would you call, in, call the roll, please? What now? Call the roll on the contract. The vote. No. This is a motion. Sorry. To You've got to let me read this contract. You just handed it to me, and now you want me to vote on it. <laughs> you just handed it to me. You just handed it to me. You've got to let me read it. But in one of the requests I had sent it out before, I have that on my on my email that I sent to you. The point of clarification is this motion to approve the accountant's contract. Yes. Is it is the term up on the contract yet? Uh, no, it's no, it's a continuing contract. No, this is just it? a review. We don't need to even re up on it right now. So yeah, I think we can. We, you know, <laughs> It's still working for us. You don't need to change it at this point. Right. It has to be voted on by this board for her to vote to okay, work so for this board. So that's why you made the motion. Right. Here. We just right. need to say yes. She's still she's still our secretary or she's still whatever the accountant. But every two years at minimum, we have to do it, and you have to give the public a minute to comment upon these contracts. They can't be continuing forever. They have to be reviewed and revoted on every two years and that's because there could be a brand new board every two years and even if it's the same old board the public still has a chance to say something about our contracts is everybody ready to vote public comment yes sure now since we're waiting on the secretary treasurer information to come back um are we voting just for the accounting today mm -hmm. okay Ed Slavin, Box 3084, St. August Green. Um, I think you should uh, issue an RFP or RFQ and allow other people to compete for it. And I don't think somebody should be able to keep a position like that for 25 years. They're not a government employee, and they don't treat you all with respect. I have seen twice in her office uh, Ms. Kemper um, rude to Commissioner Flowers. I have seen Ms. Kemper rude to me on the telephone. And otherwise, I think she's mellowed out a bit, but... Um, Give her a chance to make a proposal and give other people a chance to make a proposal. It's the American way. Thank you. That's true. Didn't we already get quotes from other accounting firms and they were like double yeah, we, what? You we know? never posted the auditors. it. They're auditors. auditors. Okay, yeah. excuse me, right. You know, Elise hasn't been our secretary for 25 years. You know, uh, I've been here for 19 years and I've seen other people in that position. Mm hmm. So she hasn't been here for 25 years. Um, but we did have a vote on it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Do we need a roll call vote? Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't need a roll call vote. Okay. How are we going to know on the record? Can I note, get a motion to know exactly what we're voting on? A motion to uh, reapprove the yep. accountant's contract. Just what you said in here. Review accounting. and renew okay. accounting contract. Aye. Aye. Okay, so everybody's in favor for it. Unanimous. It's unanimous. Okay, great. Okay, what was it, four to one or? No, everybody's four. Unanimous. No, unanimous. Right. Okay, five to zero. Okay. Let's see what else we got. We already did F, so now we're on G, I think. Okay, G. Discuss the dredge entry channel to Comanche Marina. When can we do something about that, y'all? You know when it's bad over there. We, we've, you know, we've talked about that for years, you know, on and off, and it's, it's, if you're going to do one of them, you're going to have to do all the marinas. That's, you know, the other thing is that the well, that's we already, not we already dredged that's, right up that's the private property. They say it is not. Well, it is not that channel going in there is not private property, and now y'all know that. And they haven't even come up here asking for it. It's not about them. He's using it as a moon raking operation. There's oh, okay. a huge hump in the channel. I'll send y'all good pictures, okay, from a drone. And right on the other side of that hump is what? Towboat U.S. and a boat yard. And I have been in the bathroom at Comanche listening to people cry. Listening to a woman cry because they came in there on an expensive boat. And you know, Comanche never somehow tells them about that hump in the channel. Mm -hmm. If they would be always saying, there's a hump in the channel, there's a bump. No, they drove for every bit of running gear, everything gone. 
Because you know the thing is, it gets squirrely. When the current is in there, you know how squirrely, you have to put it on. You can't just float in there. You'll just run aside. So without any, with any velocity, you have no steerage. They were, and boy, and not only that, employees of that boatyard have told me that Mr. Sabo calls that the dumbass hump. And I don't know what's so dumbass about a hump, a sandbar that's in the middle of a navigable channel. Anybody would hit that. So it is not private property by any means of the words. And even Peter Sabo, who I don't care, I don't know why we're asking him whether or not we can dredge a public channel that leads to we're his marina. I don't know. He was supposed to come back and talk to us, but he said it had been surveyed and it was public. So I don't understand. Who keeps calling it private? My recollection was that he came back and said part of it was public and part of it was okay. private. We shouldn't be counting on Mr. Sabo, a private marina owner, for anything when we're dealing with a public channel that goes back to homes, all kinds of businesses, and the marina. Once again, we, deal, we dredge like a two-mile channel of 11 feet. We don't even need close to that. All the way up to the conch house because there's a marina there and because there are other businesses there. There's no reason we can't take care of that, and it really needs a little jetty, because it just comes right back in when they dredge it. You no. think maybe we could just say this? Do you know, this particular problem, I'm telling you, is the reason I got voted 60% of this community is that mad about that hump, because it's been there over 20 years, Barry. People are sitting over at beaches waiting on the tide to come in to go in through a public channel to get to their stuff whether that be to go eat, get to their home, or the marina. Hmm. To me, it seems like a perfect match for us, and to me, it seems like a derelict of duty to allow this to go on so a private marina can take advantage of the public. This doesn't sound like that they would do that. You know, I can't imagine anybody would, would have a, specifically have something there that would sabotage a boat to come into the marina. You don't think so? Would, with the towboat U.S. and with the boat yard that does the repairs when you run up on the sandbar? You don't understand that that's a dumbass hump? Comment? You just don't believe that that employee was saying the truth. Just don't, you know. At this point, I'd want to know who's if it is public or is it private. Well, then yeah. why don't we find that out? Well, okay. Uh, I'll go over to the county. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, ask, that's all you let's ask Pete Sabo to yeah. come in and, uh, and and discuss it and see. Well, it should should not be up to Pete Sabo whether that. Who says up to it, Pete Sabo? Right. I'd say it'd be good to get him in here. Well, he's been in here before, it. but it hasn't helped solve the problem. I'll call Peter and see if he'll come to the next meeting, and we'll we'll, we'll take it back up. Sounds good. And I'll yeah, come in I'll with actual information from the county. That. Call him and ask him what he thinks about it. Oh, you know, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay, we're going to look into that, Sandy. And I'll, call to, I'll go to the county and see see try that, to find out about is. the yeah. properties. Okay, that'll be good. Okay. Okay. Public records for St. Augustine Port Waterway and Beach District. Mr. Betzlow, my question on that was, have we got in we're closer to an archivist yet? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the uh, St. Augustine Historical Society has expressed great interest in uh, assisting us, and I have met <coughs> over there with uh, Paul Weaver and Bob Naraki, who are from the society, and uh, they're real excited about it. Um, it doesn't sound like it's going to cost very much to do. I think an archivist is 25 or 30 bucks an hour, and I think on the outside it would be 10 days of work, something like that. Uh, and uh, we talked a little bit about... Uh, uh, they, they also apparently house uh, some public records for the city of St. Augustine and St. John's County, the Historical Society does old uh, archives that the county and the city did not want to hold themselves so and they get paid some kind of stipend monthly to, to hold those records from 1821 uh, so there, I think uh, he said uh, they had long, they had some uh, interns working for them people who were studying archivists or uh, what do they call it, records management in uh, in school but they lost them, and uh, Mr. Meraki said he would um, try to find somebody else to do it, uh, and uh, I can report back to you next time. But the, uh, I don't know if you've ever been in the office, but it's one room, and there's uh, 
there are a lot of pieces of paper in there and filing cabinets and so forth and some boxed up financial records, but there's not really that much. And uh, I talked to them too about scanning some of it. Um, they said especially the old documents would be important to scan to preserve them in case they deteriorate or uh, you know, things happen. Uh, so it's, uh, it's going to get underway. They're not uh, uh, asked them to uh, uh, create a proposal that I could bring to you to uh, review. Uh, and, uh, and I think by the time the next meeting rolls around, we'll have something. Great. But they were very, uh, very cooperative and, and very enthusiastic about it. That's good. All right. Next, discussion regarding hiring a port secretary. Sandy? I, we need a port secretary desperately, and I know this has come up before, and it's always been a big bone of contention. One of some of the reasons we need a secretary, well, the biggest reason we need a secretary is the Sunshine Law requires us to have an office open to the public from 8 to 5, and inside that office must be our records, our public records, unless they've been archived, they can be somewhere else. But our public records available for access by the public during the hours of 8 to 5. The Attorney General has even uh, expressed an opinion that we not only have to have that open and available to them with our records inside, you can't even put somebody off till after lunch. So the, what I went through of trying to find the records, see the records, never two years of never even knowing, could not get an answer of where the records are, if we had a secretary, we could still have that little old $100 a month office. It's not about having a big office. That secretary could literally do permits. That secretary could do the archiving. The secretary could do the website. The secretary could do um, access to, could do all of our public records requests. Uh, Miss Elise, do you have any idea how much money we've spent, say, in the last six months alone just on public records request? Because Mr. Slavin wanted to see a lot of stuff. Do you have any clue what we've spent? Because you and Mr. Betzler would have got those checks, right? Not Mr. Betzler. Well, yeah, he did. He was doing, he was, he was answering some of them to me. Mr. Betzler, okay, well, did you need what, to... What do you, what do you mean, like what we charged? Or... No, how much money, okay, so you had to charge a lot of money to fill those public no, records, right? You didn't charge him anything? You didn't... I think he paid... Um, no, Mr. Slavin might have paid once. I don't remember. I don't think he ever paid. Mm -hmm. No, he's never paid. But were you charging the port? You have to charge the port to do the, the work, all right? All the time, the extra time it took. Right, it so. Probably about $300. Okay, so that's what a secretary could do, too. Months, but, but the most important thing would be, then we're legal. When we opened, we had to declare an office. Oh, but it just disappeared. We quit. When we opened, we had to declare an office for the public to walk into. And that has to be the port office, not the office of our accountant, who doesn't have the records there. You can't ask to see them. You get sent over to the city hall, and then who has the key to the door? Mr. Piggott, who is not an employee or a commissioner. It's really important. Well, let me ask you I this. Just, a secretary, just say she could do everything in the world that we need to do in two months. Every day for two months. What does she do the other well, eight to five? I'll tell you what. Friday? She keeps that, she staffs that office that we're required to have open She's because. She's going to sit there. That's Don't what the know. law requires, like, Barry. Can, can you provide a site on that? And because, I don't see because, why she would. Because everything that I've read on that subject mm -hmm. contradicts what you're saying. We I do not have to that. keep it open all the time. We just have to, it's a reasonable Attorney time. General opinion. It's a reasonable time frame. I've read a number of uh, Florida Supreme Court opinions about this. Yes, you, it, you, can, you can push it off. There's a sliding scale of how long you can push I will records send you the Attorney General's off. opinion on access to public records. If, for instance, you are, it's a death row situation and you're right. about to be executed, you cannot be put off till lunch, as you said. But for public records requests of this kind, 24, 48, 72 hours have all been deemed completely reasonable, and there are even I'll cases send that show. I'm talking about access to public records, not a records request. That's that she has to go find and get. I'm talking about walking. People have the right. Mm -hmm. Sunshine Law gives us the right, and that's 400 pages to access physically. Like I tried, I called up and said, "Where are our public records?" I have the right to call. 
and I have the right to walk in that office and access those records right then. I'll send you the Attorney General opinion, okay? Please do. Yeah. And we'll bring that back up at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. But that's just one of the reasons. S send and no, that opinion he wouldn't to all be of us. Send, send that opinion to all of us. I will, to everybody. Okay. Yeah, she made it very clear. You can't even put some, somebody walks and wants to see them, they want to walk in there, they don't even have to tell you what they want to see. And that's why it's so important that it's not Piggott watching over that thing, because whoever comes to inspect those public records, and that's what it's called, inspection of public records. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need to keep the office open, to fulfill that right that the public has to walk in and see it during reasonable business hours. So I'm not talking about, I'm sending you a letter, you don't have to get it back to me in a few hours. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a person wanting to access the records. But I'll send that all to you. It's a very different request. Right here. All right. Okay. So now. I'd like to make a motion that we get a secretary. So that we can... Um, Any discussion with us or, and, you know... No, no discussion if there's no secretary. No. No. Y'all don't want a secretary. You just want to keep paying all the expensive money. Oh, Miss, Miss uh, Elise, I need you to get me a copy of all the bank statements. You know how when you get, like when I get my bank statement every month, I see everything that went in and everything went out because from our records, I can't tell what's come in. I can't tell what's going out. Like, look what I just did today with the city. Oh, well, two of those contracts aren't, they're even canceled. Bank statements, yeah. the bank statements are all in the public records. They're all there, all of the them. The actual statements that shows the, the, the canceled checks? The, okay. The canceled checks. The, Everything. Uh, actually, it's, they don't have cancel checks. They have the copies of the checks. Just a copy of the checks. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, that would be... All the bank statements that are in the public... Now, they're not in the files. Would they be... They are. They're yeah. not in the file cabinet. No, no, no. They're in the boxes by year. Plastic boxes. Yes, okay. by year. They're all there. And that and would have this by, year, too? It's by... Or, I mean, I'm year. sorry. That would have last year. No, because we're, the, we're doing an audit. We're getting ready to do an audit. So I have those. This will be through 218. You, I can give you from September of what year? What? what this is 2020. So from se October of 18 to September 30th of 19, mm -hmm. I have in my office. And, uh, because okay. those are getting ready to be audited. So I did not put them in the port office. Mr. Bedslow, please make sure you look up that public records inspection, okay? Uh, I've Thank read you, it before. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask Elise a question. Sure. <clears throat> um, on the general ledger that you send to us, yeah. uh, that would really show everything that it comes show in. Everything that goes but in the splits out. bother me. Is there any way you oh, can? Oh, no, because what happens is on a split, it's like, um, like for your checks. Like when I give you your commissioner pay, there's some ones where you get $5 a meeting. So that's just for uh, instance. That would be under split because it's under commissioner pay and it's under travel. So there's two, there are just two different accounts. Is the Summer Haven account also in those plastic boxes? Summer Haven, you're talking about. Uh, I want the, right, the checking the account statements. statements. Yeah. Yeah, I have them all, I had them all in a big file and they're all, they're all there now and I have them. So. Oh, could you know where those are? All right, because I'd like to see. With all the bank statements. Right. Now, is this Summer Haven account, this started like 10 or 11 years ago? No, we never okay. had. How long have we been the government sponsor for Summer Haven? Well, How we many different? got any <coughs> for it. Um, I'm not talking about, we've been, we've been the right. government began sponsor. In, began yeah. in 2016. 16, so just this one contract. Restoration, yeah. Okay, and everything else was going yeah. with the county or whatever. Yeah, and I don't think the money came until 17. Seven, yeah. We, okay, so in there would be the Summer Haven account. Okay. Yeah. I would put all the bank statements together when I do that. When I reconcile the accounts, they're right. all together. Okay. Now we're up to old business. Nothing here on old business. Okay. Okay, Ed. Public comment. And anybody else? Box 384. First of all, I'd like to thank you for a very good and productive meeting and for putting things on the agenda that needed to be there. We've come a long way, haven't we? In July, um, the Secretary Treasurer and Attorney tried to charge me $50 an hour to babysit me, um, which is illegal under the Florida Supreme Court case. And at that time, y'all were having meetings where um, you wouldn't allow public comment. We've come a long way in terms of legal compliance. 
Speaking of legal compliance, I want to commend uh, Commissioner Flowers for her indefatigable efforts. And I want to point out a way that we can get better compliance with um, pollution laws in St. Augustine and, and the Port District. Um, under the Clean Water Act um, whistleblower provision, employees have a right not to be discriminated against if they report um, pollution, if they report violations. Um, I've tried several of those when I was riding circuit. One of them involved an oil tanker employee named Morton Culligan, who was an engineer on an AHL shipping boat. And very revealingly, we had the trial in the Orlando Public Library. I, I suggested that the ALJ hold the trial there. And uh, I had the captain of this rust bucket on the stand. And he said, you don't think that I'd pollute the ocean in broad daylight, do you? And I said, no, captain. The testimony was that you did it at night. In fact, Mr. Culligan testified, the engineer testified, my client, that um, in the... Uh, nautical industry, um, there's a uh, reputation, an image, a, a view as to what causes pollution, nighttime. So the next time the government officials come here, you might want to engage them in a discussion and figure out how can we notify the employees of every single marina, every single um, boat business, every single boat yard, that they have the indefatigable right to file a complaint. It has to be with OSHA, has to be in writing, they filed in Jacksonville, within 30 days. Shortest statute of limitations ever. My friend Chris Van Riper from law school actually said when we were trying a whistleblower case against Oak, please, Mr. Betzel, pay attention. I'm talking. Please pay attention to what I'm saying. That's very rude. Anyway, um, Chris Van Riper actually said, um, gee, I wish there were 30-day statute of limitations for attorney malpractice, but our environmental whistleblower laws basically protect the employee, whether it's of a government entity um, or of a private company. And if there's pollution of any kind, they have rights. And that's how we maybe get to the compliance issues, like with the uh, human waste and, and the water waste. Now, I tried one case. We got a precedent from the Secretary of Labor, Robert Reich, that said that space shuttle cabin air, concerns about pollution, contaminants in it, ethylene oxide, was protected activity under the Clean Air Act. Won another precedent, also under the Clean Air Act, for senior special agent Robert E. Tyndall. You might have read about it on the blog. He just passed away. Really good guy one of my mentors, he had concerns about $100 million worth of acid rain research fraud. And the government, the Inspector General, retaliated against him. We ran off that Inspector General. We got two judges reversed. And, and the court held, the, uh, the uh, Department of Labor Administrative Review Board, on its first day, that um, if you're an environmental law enforcement person and you engage in protected activity, including uh, in, uh, being told you can't recuse yourself or being told to fix a case, as happened with Special Agent Tyndall, you have rights. We ran off the Inspector General of EPA, John C. Martin, after 13 years. Special Agent Tyndall got back pay. I got paid. And we established a precedent for every single environmental law enforcement official, which would include these officers who are here, some of them. So I think we need to let them know that. I think we need to do an RFQ for the attorney. I think we need to do an RFQ and RFP um, for the Secretary and the Treasurer. Um, and. Um, Keep on with your, with your good work. I mean, I, I see tensions here that are being resolved, and, and I see Commissioner Flowers' concerns um, are being um, vetted and, and heard. What I heard from Mr. Pickett, Pickett was very discouraging, though, in terms of he thinks that he has the right to violate appropriations law. It's just like President Donald John Trump. Would you say I couldn't hear you? Mr. Pickett. Thinks he has what? He thinks he has the right to break the law. I mean, d did I understand correctly that... There's an issue as to whether or not the city of St. Augustine is in violation or breach of contract with y'all and your grant agreements? I don't know yet. Like I said, I was, some of the contracts I'm looking at were even canceled. Exactly. Why would they send me a canceled contract? And How would I not get confused? And where's my kayak launch? I've, I've got friends <laughs> been, in the they, city. I've got they approved it eight years ago, Ed. Yeah, and, and it wasn't built. No, um, it was I, better to take that money and spend it on fuel tanks. I think it was illegal, and I think you ought to direct the well, attorney to do some research. And um, uh, again, uh, um, uh, if I could have a couple extra seconds, because the commissioner's questions, but I, I think the city of St. Augustine may be in violation of the law, and you, your attorney needs to communicate with their attorney. Please ask Isabel Christine Lopez to come to your next meeting to answer Commissioner Flowers' uh, questions. And I thank you. Thank you. Good idea. All right. Anybody else from the public? Nope. Comments by commissioners. Commissioner Way. No. Commissioner Rivers. No. Barry. No. 
Sandy? I think I'm running my mouth enough, believe it or not. All right. Next meeting date is the 18th of February. If that's the case, we're all adjourned. Now, we made it on time. Great. Okay.